it's the cards you're dealt with right yeah but it's how you deal with it it's it's how you re respond there's so much that you can't control you can't control like what family you're born into or no. your parents issues that they're dealing with exactly, or, or crazy shit that happens to you Seriously, but, yeah. but you can control when once you're an adult it's not your fault but it's your responsibility to be able to to manage it or, or come to terms with it go to therapy if you need to or or talk to somebody or meditate or learn different ways to deal with it so you can actually enjoy life <laughs> Right, guys <laughs> welcome back baby welcome back to the unrepeatable show i got a little intro for you guys for our special guest right now and our special guest off camera i'm thrilled to introduce our very special guest today nolan ryan a visionary entrepreneur who has taken the business world by storm with his incredibly successful cleaning company eco safe zone cleaning but that's not all Nolan's passion for sharing insight and stories led him to co-host podcasts alongside his friends Dylan and myself called the Night Market Podcast. That's fucking pretty good. Start that's here. that's a great little, intro. Look at that. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet, oh, baby. Shit. And let's not forget about the mastermind behind the scenes, our producer for the day, PETA, <laughs> whose dedication and creativity have helped shape the magic you're about to experience today on this <laughs> podcast, my let's guy. Let's go. He doesn't like being on fucking camera, but he's in the back. Yo, don't worry. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Pause. PETA in the back. <laughs> Together, we're diving into a heart of entrepreneurship, innovation, and the fascinating journey that has brought Nolan to the forefront of the business landscape. From eco-safe zone cleaning to hosting the night market, Nolan's experiences promise invaluable lessons and inspiration for everyone. So with further ado, <laughs> let's dive into the unrepeatable podcast, baby, and get ready for an unrepeatable show that will leave you motivated, enlightened, and hungry for success. Let's go. What Look a at crazy that intro. fucking intro, baby. Oh, man, I like that. Was that's up all night on that. Was up all night on that's that. That's dedication. That's preparation. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's something Dylan Tran doesn't know, baby. I mean, it almost <laughs> it almost feels like a night market podcast, but uh It almost is, man. But it's not. But it's not. It's just <laughs> Nolan, we're missing fucking Dylan. We still got producer P in the background, so it's cool. We're showing you a little bit of what we do on the outside of the the unrepeatable show. Yeah, good shit, man. I like it. I like yeah. the all of the effort that you put into the, all of this it's uh, it shows you know what i mean and it's getting better and better and you're yep. getting better at it and it's like it just feels nice and smooth we come down here have a chat i love it i appreciate it man i appreciate you guys having on the on the show as well and it's nice having guys on the show that you can just chill with and talk the shit with you know what i mean yep. it's nice just having two dudes that just just know each other you know what i mean they've been just chatting forever you know what i mean yeah. so Let's get into your life here, Nolan, because that's why I kind of want to have you on the podcast, and that's what I do on The Unrepeatable Show. We dive deep into people's lives and figure out more about you that other people really wouldn't know about you, my man. Sweet. So let's get into this. So we started with Eco Safe Zone, right? That's only been a two-year, three-year thing, right? It's about three years. We started in 2020, like right when uh, COVID was just a thing, and it was super scary, and yeah. everybody was like, we saw like... You know, like, remember the news of seeing people in China, like, dying on the street and stuff, and everybody was scared? It's like, yeah, we, we like, laugh about it now, but at the, at the time, it was like, oh, shit, what is happening? Seriously, what is happening? And um, honestly, when we first, like, Peter and I used to work together, and we were talking about it, and my whole thing was, how do I get in front of this? How do I help people? Because my whole thing was, I just want everybody around my, in my life to not be afraid. Yeah. Just to be, like, calm. So... Did a bunch of research, was talking to PETA like hours and hours. I'm talking like till three in the morning. We would talk at work. Um, and then uh, I made an investment, bought a bunch of disinfection equipment, like $10,000 worth. Yeah. And we were just disinfecting places for free, like so this nursing homes and uh, uh, group homes. Churches. and uh, What's that? Churches. Yeah, and churches. Yeah. We just did a whole bunch of places just for free so that yeah. people would not be afraid and they weren't afraid of losing their businesses. Yeah. And then it just kind of snowballed from there, man. So this idea came during COVID. It didn't come before COVID. No, it came right like right when it was like kind of bubbling up about like, oh shit, COVID happened and COVID was like yeah. just hit LA and like, you know, it was like, oh, are we going to close down too? And yeah. it was like, oh. So, so what were you doing then before cleaning then? Did you have your own job going? Did you yeah. have an entrepreneurship? Yeah, I worked or? at uh, a group home for, for kids with uh, behavioral issues. Okay. With PETA. I, uh, PETA and I worked there. We worked with, it was like a group home of 10 kids. Yeah. Um, you know, that were like either going to like, 
it was kind of like the the step before going into like juvenile detention. Okay. So there was kids that had a lot of issues. They had their drug addiction, yeah. anger issues, um, and that was a great job. But it was emotionally just would burn the shit out of you. Oh, right? for sure. It was tough. What got you into that? Uh, honestly, man, like I had friends that worked there, and I just I I do care about kids, and I want to like wanted to help. Yeah. Um. And uh, but right after high school, I worked as a like a teacher's aide okay. for elementary school, so I had like experience working with kids for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a fun job. Get to hang out with kids, get to you know go to movies and play sports with kids, whatever. But I got to a point where I was just so it was just like heartbreaking seeing these kids coming from like broken homes and, and emotional difficulties getting hooked on drugs and they'd run away and they'd go to the city and be on meth for 10 days and they'd come back to us and they'd be all like drugged out and it would just be it was just tough man it was just emotionally draining um for sure you could try your best to help them out but they're they're gonna end up going back to their normal shit anyway it's it's, there's only so much you can do right um and but i like i don't say that being like oh you shouldn't help kids it's just like for us we were doing as much as we could and uh I kind of felt like I want to help people. There's yeah. got to be another way to help people. No, for sure. Uh, so with this whole cleaning thing, I was like, well, here's another way that I can help people and I'll do it for free and I'll help disinfect places. Yeah. And then um, out of nowhere, I got this, well, I applied for it. I got this government contract. So I, during like the peak of COVID, yeah. our company was disinfecting all of the government buildings in the province. Jeez, man. And so that was like enough for me to to quit my job. Yeah and focus on this full time and then we turned it into a commercial cleaning company and that way i could kind of be like hands off a little bit and i got some guidance from uh, a mentor that has an amazing cleaning company in calgary so i kind of followed his outline a little bit but made it my own and peter and i were kind of like you know figuring stuff out and um and now it's fast forward three years later and i'm i'm able to kind of be in the mix but i'm not like cleaning i'm not doing a whole bunch of stuff sometimes i'll go clean a carpet because it's satisfying and if my guys are busy i'll do it but uh yeah man honestly like it's crazy peter and i were just talking about it yesterday about how like it's crazy that him and i had like we were like talking about this idea and like oh i wonder if this could be a business yeah and now like it's a pretty good business. No man, yeah, you're you know, killing I got, it, man. We got, I got 20 people working for me. I got yeah. like, I'm able to sponsor athletes, like uh, Peter's brother. I did see that. Uh, that the Eco Safe logo is on his. That makes me so proud, man. Because yeah. Peter's brother, like Apete, worked for me for two, two and a half years. Right when it started, didn't it? Yeah, disinfecting. Yeah. He was he was coming with me on like trips to Saskatoon, disinfecting wow. every week. Crazy. And man. Uh, now you get to yeah. get back to him. Yeah, man, yeah. it's cool. It's a good to feeling. Your company. Yeah. So before this company, were you always into like creating your own business or being your own boss at some nah, point? Man. You were I never, never thought I'd own my own business. I didn't like I always have like I always have like ideas that come to me and I'll write them down and I, I feel like I'm a creative person. And I like I just like I don't know. But I never like would never would act on it and I never wanted to own a business. It sounds like so much work. Yeah. I was like, ah, and so then when I had this, do this then? honestly, I, when, when I had this idea, I was like, we should do this to help people. And people yeah. was like, yeah, man, let's do it. Like we could do nursing homes. We could do this. And like, Peter was like, he believed in me so much that it was like, oh yeah, this, this is, this is working. This is making sense. Yeah. And then after some contracts were coming, it was kind of like, oh shit, I'm making, we're making money. Was it like right time, right place kind of thing? It was honestly, it was, it was a mixture of like the timing yeah right and it created urgency so i like actually worked hard on it yeah instead of being like oh maybe someday i'll have a a company of my own yeah you know like oh this is an idea that would work but it was like had to had to do it fast because i didn't know if covid would even be a thing yeah um and a supportive friend makes a huge difference if it was just my idea and i was like telling my friends and they'd be like oh man like i had friends that were like you're too late and this was before, like, 20, it was, like, 2020 still. And like, oh, no, COVID's already done, man. Don't waste your, mo- your time and your money. Yeah, no, I was crazy. like, ah, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. What, what am I going to lose? I got, let's just try. Let's just put some advertising out, get some contracts, see what happens. So how did you figure out to do all that? Like, did you have, like, somebody in your ear or someone talking to you to tell you what to do? Because you didn't do this prior to what you were doing, I right? Had, honestly, I had no idea, but I had, um, shout out to to mike i i he's like my my mentor in in the cleaning 
industry. He's got a really good company in Calgary. I'd call him up every now and then and be like, hey, what should I do with this? Or what's the industry standard for this? Just to kind of have an outline. But most of it was just me kind of winging it and just learning by trial and error. And I, I'm lucky to have a lot of amazing uh, cleaners that work for me that yeah. like will, you know, let me kind of mess up but at the same time they're like patient with me and i, I, I yeah i feel you know? you. how'd you stay motivated through all that like through the ups and downs through that honestly the motivation was when i quit my job it was like okay now this is time where i have to grind or else i'm not going to eat i didn't have a baseline yeah, that's and enough I, motivation but that's like that okay i'm gonna go back a little bit the whole like or else i'm not going to eat that's yeah. like a fear-based thing that i had to correct because okay. it was like i was so worried about like oh i'm, I'm going to be broke I'm going to like, cause I had issues when I was a kid about, uh, you know, just not having things right. And not, not growing up, uh, in, in the, in the, in the best way. Yeah. So I was afraid of this whole, like, Oh, if, if my company doesn't do well, I'm going to be broke and I'm going to be hungry and, and we're going to not survive. But then just by learning and, and kind of just relaxing into it and taking time and just putting all my passion, my effort into this business. Yeah. Now I'm able to kind of just like sit back, enjoy it a little bit, have fun with it and, you know, have do a podcast because no, exactly. I go to a fucking golf tournament, even though I don't golf. Like, yeah. What am I doing? You know, just enjoying life a bit more. That's awesome, man. So you, yeah. your fight or flight mentality came when you were young, you think? Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. Um, just like difficulties at home. Like my mom, shout out to my mom and my dad. Like they're amazing. They were, they're not together. They weren't together for a while, but yeah. um, just seeing my mom raise two kids on her own and having like three, four jobs sometimes just to make ends meet, always stressing about money, always working, like never, like never being able to rest until now. She just retired actually two weeks ago, which is fucking just feels so awesome. That is awesome. It's a, it's a really good feeling to see her kind of now at like however old she is in her sixties, be able to just relax and enjoy life. Man, and that was a big lesson to me, you know? Yeah. Um, it's crazy how our past can, like, form our future so much. We don't even know it. Yeah, you know what I mean? absolutely. Our childhood and how we're raised, like, we're not, cho- like, how we're raised, man, is not in our control whatsoever. No, it's the, car- it's the cards you're dealt with, right? Yeah. But it's how you deal with it. It's it's how you re- respond. There's so much that you can't control. You can't control, like, what family you're born into or no. your parents' issues that they're dealing with exactly, or, or crazy shit that happens to you. Seriously, but, yeah. but you can control when once you're an adult. It's not your fault, but it's your responsibility to be able to to manage it or, or come to terms with it. Go to therapy if you need to or, or talk to somebody or meditate or learn different ways to deal with it so you can actually enjoy life. How would you figure that, all that out? that's a good question that's a good question i'm still figuring it out yeah we're all figuring it out to be honest with you but a lot of people figure it out at different times in their lives you know Mm -hmm. what i mean yeah i was uh i was very lucky to have a lot of really good teachers in my life yeah um when i was uh 18 like my whole thing i i wanted to play basketball in college that was my main thing but i wasn't very good uh, Were you yeah. in high school though? No, I wasn't. No, I you thought start, I was, but I like start? no, I was on the bench. Oh shit! But uh, <laughs> like you still get, have a dream though, baby. Oh man, hoop dreams till yeah. I die. Like yeah. I, I was like convinced that I would play college, but like realistically, I just wasn't that good. I could shoot yeah. if I was open, yeah. but I couldn't do much else. <laughs> what high school did you go again to? I went to Campbell. Oh yeah, that's it, shit so high it's, a, it's a good basketball school. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> I went to La Bola. A little sorry, rivalry. Yeah. I like that. No, but <laughs> it was a very good, like, very good basketball school. Even just, like, making the team was, like, tough for me because yeah. all those, like, so many guys are just at a higher level, right? Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, but What year was this? Oh, so I graduated in 07. So did you try out in grade 9? or I, I tried out in grade 9. I got cut. Okay. And uh, Michael Jordan. Yeah, I was devastated, man. I was, like, I went home just crying like i was like fuck this like yeah. life is over i hate this and my brother was like he came to my room when i was crying my brother is four years older than me and he was like uh <laughs> he said to me it doesn't matter that you got cut this year but um go to the go to the the gym teacher get a key to the school yeah and ask if you can go there in the morning and shoot every single day until next year and then if you don't make the team then well then you suck <laughs> Like he was like straight up like if you if you work hard for a year and you don't make it well yeah. then do something else. Yeah, hundred percent. He's smart. But then so then I was like okay I took that as a challenge yeah. and uh, talked to Mr. Cherkis. Shout out Mr. Cherkis. Gave me the key. I went every morning at seven a.m. and I did drills all by myself. 
Jeez, that's why you were good at shooting then, hey? I, I was pretty good at shooting. Going to first period, just drenched in sweat. Did just you make stinking. the team after? Yeah, I made, the, I made the team in grade 10. Let's go, bro. Uh, and then yeah. made the team in grade 11. Did you get on the 12. court in grade 10? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. But at, at, it was tough because of the, the team was already, like, stacked. made, right? Well, I remember, it was I remember stacked. the garbage time, man. Was right? Garbage so then I was garbage time. But, yeah. like, it was cool, though, because people would be, like, stoked if I would go on the court and I'd make a three. Oh, yeah. You know, that was my yeah, thing. I, like, I wasn't that. passing to nobody. I was oh, fucking, no I'm shooting this. What's it's garbage yeah. time? I've never heard of that. Garbage time is, like, when the game is either either your team is winning by a bunch or losing by a bunch, and, like, the game at that point doesn't matter in the last, oh, like, two minutes, yeah. right? So it's like, like then you in put the in your bench. It's like, okay, I'm going to rest my stars so they don't get injured, and I'm going to put Nolan in. And, <laughs> it's the and, worst, too, and, sometimes. But that's that's my time to shine. That's I'm going to prove that I can do this, coach. I got a hoop dreams. So you're just blowing out Nolan. I got a hoop dreams, baby. <laughs> I was so anxious, though. I was so nervous because it was like it meant so much to me. Why did it mean so much to you? Like, was it a thing like before high school and like? Yeah, early yeah. Days I too? played ball when I was in elementary. Like, it was uh, honestly like basketball was for me. It was like where I could find my peace. Like, it was we had a hoop in the in the uh, driveway, and I would just go there and just shoot by myself. At, when I was in grade from grade two onward, I would just just shoot, just shoot, shoot, shoot. And it was just, it was like a meditation that I didn't even know it was meditation. It was just peace for me. No, I feel And my brother, like I looked up to my brother, he played until high school and then he stopped because he was doing rowing and, and cycling and stuff, but. Um, doing the cool sports. Yeah, he was just like, cause he's, how tall is my brother? I think he's like six foot five, six foot six. Jeez, that's a and big so, man. So he was doing rowing and he was doing stuff like that. He didn't really like team sports. He was more of a solo guy. Yeah. But um, I get the whole like aspect about just getting away and being in the zone. You know what I mean? Like I, I loved that in a, feeling in a shitty family atmosphere too. And my family was always fighting. Parents always fighting, man. But every time I went to practice, man, it was like I never even thought about what so was, it was happening. So it was like an escape for you, yeah. It was an escape. You know Fuck what I mean? Yeah, for that's those exactly. Two hours, yeah, man. You don't think about anything else but what you're doing in the moment. Just, and that's hard for a lot of people to do it sometimes. Yeah. Because you know what I mean? Their ADHD or their fucking mind's always pulling them to something else. Yeah, I was so anxious as a kid, right? And the only time that I could have peace yeah. is just like focusing on my shot and feeling like hearing that swish. Yeah, the swish. And it was just like heaven to me, right? So, so who'd you look up to when you were back in the day playing basketball? My brother. <laughs> Your brother, hey? Yeah, my brother. But I also, like, for actual, like, players, was Peja Stojakovic. I don't know if you know who that is. No idea. Mm-hmm. One of the best shooters of all time. Played for the Kings. I loved it because he wasn't the most athletic guy. He was yeah. kind of just a spot-up shooter. Was he white? Yeah, uh, yeah he's yeah. Uh, Serbian. <laughs> Serbian. He's a but he was just, dude, he w- like, his, his shot was so pure, and yeah. it was just cash every time. Is he the guy that got into fights all the time? Peja? Yeah. No, not, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm thinking of somebody else, though. Hey, Vladi Divac, maybe? Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I just loved I just loved the the whole thing of it, it, Reggie Miller. You know Reggie Miller. Yeah, I, Reggie Miller, I love yeah. watching Reggie Miller shoot three too. Three point shooter. Yeah, three uh, all the three point shooters. Those were. So guys, do you guys ever win a championship back in the day or what? Yeah, we won we won cities in grade ten. Uh, I was playing garbage time in <laughs> in in the city in the finals, <laughs> and I I threw the ball up for the last second because oh, we like we were up by like ten and it's it a was huge like moment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking awesome though, man. Like, were you on the senior team in grade ten? Were you on the junior team in grade ten? Uh, no, I was on the ju- I was on the junior team. Yeah, me yeah. too. I was yeah. on the junior team in yeah. grade ten too. You know, only few guys fucking made it to like the senior team. Yeah, but our our senior team at that time was really good though too. I think they won provincials. Shit. Yeah. So how'd you get into like a sport like basketball and being so calm into it into like a sport like Muay Thai and fighting and Man, fucking look up at this. people? I like these questions, and they this you know is good. Mean? This because is good. Uh, I, did you do it in high school? I don't think you did it in high school, right? No, I, I didn't do it until after high school. So my whole thing was with basketball, I could just train by myself and I could like just focus on the form and the technique and I could just be in the zone. And I loved that so much. And then after high school, when I learned that, right, found out, but it was obvious that I couldn't keep playing basketball. I was like devastated. And I um, found this gym, Siam Muay Thai. And I was like, Oh, Muay Thai. I was watching some videos on, uh, on YouTube. And I was like, fuck, I could do this. Really? Hey, you said that to yourself. Oh yeah. I was like, fuck, this looks fucking amazing. I wanted to do like the extreme. I was like, for me, I remember watching videos. (laughs) This is fucking (laughs) funny, but I was watching bull riding videos so the professional bull riding. You said and, you could do that too. And and Muay Thai, and I was like, I could do both of these. No fucking way. I was way, like, man. I could do, I could be a bull rider because I don't, I like, I had no fear. I was just like, I just want to do something like yeah. fucking extreme. But then fighting, were you like, could I fuck somebody up? Like you told yourself that. For me, the fighting, the the what what drew me to to fighting was watching these guys train, 
at like a hundred and ten percent. Like hitting the pads, I was like, holy shit! Like hitting yeah. tie pads, and they're just rah, rah, rah. I was like, oh man, that looks fucking like amazing. So it was more the art that intrigued you to it. It was, uh, it was the art and like pushing yourself to the max, and then yeah. and then also that fear when I would think about it, that fear of like stepping into the ring, like oh man, like you could just your life could be over or change. You like that? I, at the time when I was like a 17 year old kid and I was like depressed because I couldn't play basketball anymore I was like this 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 gets me going I want to try I want to and I remember I told my friend at the time I haven't spoken to him since high school but I was like yeah man I think I'm gonna go to Thailand and and and, and do Muay Thai like do kickboxing and he was like no man don't no you don't just do that like no, go to go to university like try to play basketball somewhere but don't just don't just go and fight in Thailand because this was like 2000 yeah 2007 yeah. 2008 and I was like that, like motivated me even more because I'm like a contrarian. I was like, I want to like prove people wrong, but I also want to prove myself wrong because I don't think I can actually do it. Why didn't you think you could do it? Oh, because it's you terrifying. Loved it. you, like you loved it so much. Yeah, well, I, like I didn't think that I could step into the ring, you yeah. know, because I'm like a, I was a, what, a skinny white kid from the Midwest of Canada. Like, so who are you trying to prove that to? Myself. Why? Because because you know I, I mean like I don't like I watch I fucking love MMA and I love watching UFC every Saturday and I'm like fuck I would never do that like, there's yeah. no way I could walk in there and just really get knocked out and be humiliated in front of your family and your friends and everything yeah but I'm sure that they think about that like the same as you right when you go down to the field and stuff like yeah, a lot of people think the same they're like this guy's crazy man yeah, yeah. when you're Getting flying head first people, and yeah, you're yeah. fucking you did a suplex on a guy last week yeah to go in and like it's the honest, same mentality to be honest I tell myself before I go in on the field I'm like holy fuck I'm doing this too you know what I mean so like I still can't believe I'm fucking doing it to be honest like one of the boys came up to me one of the like the the media guys and writers and he's like he loves the podcast he loves listening to the podcast awesome. and love how honest I talk and everything and he's like man it's cool how honest I talk and I was like man I like I get scared shitless every time I play a football game. Fuck yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm fucking nervous as a motherfucker, right? But as soon as it's time to go, something just clicks and you're doing yeah, it. It's go time. And then at the end of the game, you're like, holy fuck, I just did all that yeah. shit and I was so worried. Is that yeah. the same as fighting? I think so. And I think if you don't have that, you either maybe a little neurodivergent or you're, you're a little different in the head a little bit. <laughs> and It's just fine. Like, yeah. it, it, people are wired different. Yeah. It, you're either either that or, um, or you just don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Right. And so like those those nerves and those jitters proves that like you actually do care about your life. Right. And that's a good thing. So like yeah. fear is motivating basically, right? For both ends. I think so. For yeah. And for yeah. football. Exactly. But for me it was like if I don't like when I was a kid, when I was seventeen, to me, my whole thing was if I don't do something extreme or like absolutely out of this world and out of the ordinary, I don't mean anything. Mm. I don't want to just be like the same whatever do the a nine to f- go to school do the nine to five and and white picket fence and if you do that that's fine that's like that's totally up to you but i just i couldn't do it i was what just made you not want to do that uh, like, what made you afraid of that too uh probably you're afraid of doing that but then you're kind of want to go get knocked in the face and not scared of getting like yeah you know what I, mean? I, I was just afraid of afraid of like the, the mundane afraid yeah. of being normal yeah because to me, that was like the worst thing that you could be called was normal. Normal, yeah. Right, and 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 for me, it was like I had to stick out. I had to be different. I had to be the funny guy. I had to be the loud person in class because I like, or else I would just be ignored. You were, hey. Well, yeah. at, at home, were you the comedian. Was, yeah, I, I tried to be. I was yeah. I was the funny guy, but like at home, it was like I I couldn't really. Like when I was when I was young, it was like couldn't really do much, you yeah. know, except for play basketball and and. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. So what made you push the limits and go all the way to freaking Thailand? Like at 17, 18 or 19? I, I left when I was 18. I went there. To... That's crazy. You know what I mean? Just to leave at 18 years old and just go to Thailand? Like, did your parents, like, support you or what were they So it was just saying? it was just my mom at that time. And, yeah. and, and <laughs> I remember her saying, like, she was like, okay, yeah, you can go to Thailand. I'm not going to stop you, but um, just don't fight. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Because I was like, yeah, I probably won't fight anyway. I just want to train. Oh, okay. Is that what you thought? Uh, yeah, like, I'm just yeah. going to go there and, like, get okay. better at this thing that I'm, like, falling in love with. Yeah. Um, And I remember I had this amazing trainer uh, in well, Thailand. Well, like, let's go back a little bit. Like, how did you get there? Like, you just hopped on a flight. You got there. Like, where were you going? Where did you stay? Like, how did you? Yeah, so I did some research. And how I, did you figure this shit out yeah, at 18? at 18. And it's different, too, because you don't have iPhones, <laughs> right? Like, I mean. it was, like, 2008. Oh, I thought um, it was the 80s. Fuck you, man. <laughs> Not that old. I'm kidding, buddy. Uh, but yeah, how'd you do it all? Like, I'm interested. 
<laughs> like I'm fucking 33, <laughs> man. I, I feel so old. You looked him. I thought was like 16. <laughs> 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 no, <yeah. laughs> I love it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I I did research. I was looking up like Fairtex. I don't know if you know Fairtex. No. Bang Flea, like in Bangkok. Fairtex is like a big Muay Thai brand. Okay. For clothing and or uh, like just gear, right? Yeah. Um, and they had a like a big huge complex where you could just go and train and i think it was on mtv uh jack osborne do you know who that is no like ozzy the mtv era (laughs) ozzy osborne's (laughs) you're so fucking young no i know so peter are you with me so you you remember meet the osborne's the osborne's like ozzy osborne the reality show and his son jack osborne do you remember that guy Anyway, he yeah. had a show on MTV where he went and he did all these extreme things and he went to Bangkok and he trained. Oh, and shit. I was like, oh, fuck. If, if he could do it, I could do it. <laughs> See, um, like, that's crazy, your your attitude back in the day. That's wild. That's yeah. why you own a business and that's why you're doing so well. Honestly, like, fuck it. If he can do it, I could do it. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. In no, Muay Thai, it's different. It was the worst that could happen is I could die. Have that attitude at yeah. 18, though, is crazy. Thanks, man. Yeah, guess, that's wild. Yeah. I didn't get yeah. that attitude until I was like 24, 23. I think, I think for me, it just stemmed from like, needing to be seen mm-hmm. right needing to like be acknowledged yeah so anyway I, at 18 i went to thailand did research went to uh fairtex and i was an 18 year old kid and i was there was all these like professional fighters training at this gym and i went and i was like it felt nice but it felt to me like a tourist thing there were so many tourists and i was like i don't want to do this i don't want to yeah. just be a tourist I, so i asked one of the guys that was holding pads for me this thai guy and i was like where can i go where I can actually train. Like more dungeon kind of type I wanna, shit. I want to train with like real Thai, like Muay Thai fighters. Okay. And then he gave me like this, uh, the name of a gym and he was like, go here. And it was like way up north in like northern Thailand. On top of a hill. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, seriously, that'd be like, like a dojo. It feels like I'm in Kung Fu Panda. Like, anyway, <laughs> and it, so, so I went there. I went, it was uh, in a place called like Mae Hong Song in up north in Thailand. And I went there and it was uh, B. His his name was uh, Mr. B. <laughs> Shout out B and A. His brother A. Uh, B and A. Yeah, because those names are like super long in, in Thai. I think yes, it's like yeah. I I don't want to say it all. It's like no. uh, Chon Don. I I can't say it. I'll no, but so it that's up. how you just call them. B yeah, and just a. B and A. And, and they spoke and they spoke English. A little bit, yeah. Okay. And but obviously now their English is a lot better. They have a really successful uh, Muay Thai gym. Um, but I uh, so this is back in two thousand eight. And I went up there and they were training like locals. They were training like a lot of Thai people. And there wasn't, at the time when I went there, there wasn't any like foreigners. The white boys and I there. went up and I, I asked if I could just hit some pads with them. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he got his brother, A, to hold pads for me. And I, I was like, just as hard as I could, I was just kicking, like just trying to prove myself, prove yourself, right? Yeah. And then he, he held uh, like this, he held the pads like this for a teep, like a push kick. And I fucked up and I, I like went too high and I kicked his thumb and broke his thumb. He broke his fucking. And I was like, "Fuck, I'm out of here!" Like I just, this is fucking brutal. And he was like mad. He was like, "Ah, like this." And I was like, "Ah, shit." Yeah, no way. Oh well, like I'll just go back to Bangkok. (laughs) Fuck (laughs) this. I get the train. Um, (laughs) No way. Yeah, I was like, I was like, ah, this is embarrassing. So before I left, though, I went to the the big hanging bags outside and I was just like kicking. I was so angry that I like fucked up and like hurt his thumb and I was just kicking as hard as I could. Yeah. And then the the main trainer came up to me. I was like, hey, you want to you you want to live here with us and and train? And I was like, yeah, one hundred percent. So then I trained there for two months. Do you have to pay or anything, or what did you have to do? Well, with them, like you usually would, but with them, like I think. I don't know. Like, I feel like sometimes when I look back at it, I, I get kind of like emotional about it because I feel like he knew that I was just like an 18 year old kid. Yeah. And like, I was just eating meals with these guys and, and I didn't, like, I wasn't paying anything. Yeah. I wasn't paying for the food. Like, I feel like when, when I was like, I was 18 and I was like, oh, this is cool. This is like, like, th- I'm part of the family. But it's like, realistically, I should have been paying. Yeah. But they didn't ask, and I didn't have, like, the wherewithal to be like, oh, here's some money. I was just like, this is amazing. I'm training. I'm getting free training and free food, and I'm living with these guys. Yeah. You didn't even realize. I had no idea. You were so young. What if they're asking you in, like, Thai and you just didn't understand? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, they were like, where's our money? <laughs> where's our money? Nah, I went back. I remember I went, like, I went back, like, uh, six years after that, and I, I, I paid. It's the Dylan mindset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's just a, it's a young it's a young mindset right like I, I was just like um but like so i was there training for two weeks or sorry two months and 
at that time, you would have to go to like an internet cafe to like get uh, internet. Really? Hey? And like t- uh, email cool, so people. So you didn't have a cell phone back I then? I had a little Nokia either. cell phone. Oh, undestructible. But but I didn't I didn't even like think about it. I didn't have service. I was yeah. just like oh whatever. And one morning at five a.m. we're like. Uh, we wake up at 5 a.m. to go for like a little 5k run and then start training yeah and b is like knocking on my door like my little hut and he goes like this he hands me this like his own like little nokia phone and goes your mom oh i was like what yeah i thought he was joking and i was Mm -hmm. like took it and my mom was like like just panicking like where are you like what's going on yeah are are you safe it was two months i hadn't talked to her how did she get fucking B's number? That's what I said. I was like, how did you get this number? So she called the gym that I was at oh, in Bangkok. Okay. And then she was asking, like, she was, they got, like, she was asking all the trainers, like, where, like, where is my son? And the one guy was like, oh, that guy, I told him to go to this gym. Maybe he's there. Yeah. I'll give him, I'll give him, I'll give you his number. And so my mom, like, just called this random Thai number. I <laughs> got my trainer and then was t- <laughs> I was like oh I'm so sorry I didn't realize it's been two months yeah, I'm loving mom, it here man. I'm super safe like, yeah. like everything's okay He's freaking out and by two the way I'm, I was mom, like oh and by the way I'm out. fighting next week <laughs> oh my you said that to her too <laughs> yeah yeah oh my god and she was like what <laughs> I was like yeah like everything is safe like these guys will take care of me it's not gonna, like I won't I feel like confident and she was like uh, I remember her saying like okay you're on your own like as, as long as I know that you think you're safe, like you're 18, go for it. So, so what made you want to fight then when you went there? Let's backtrack a little bit. So in those two months, I felt so like I was saying like I lived there and I was 18, and these guys are like training me and they care about me. I felt like it was a family. Yeah. I like I, I had never felt so like um like part of something. And when when he he said like after like a really good training uh day he. He went up to me. He's like, "Do you want to go to Chiang Mai, like the the big city, and and fight mm-hmm. next weekend?" I was like, "Yeah." You just said, "Yeah." I was you're, like, "Yeah." I had no question in my mind. I felt I felt like a fucking no matter weapon. you didn't even know who you were fighting or anything. Mm-mm. And what what weight was that at? I don't even remember. You don't remember? I was skinny as fuck. You can see like pictures on Facebook of me. I'm like fucking. All right. I think I was like 135. Like six two, one thirty five, just like shredded. Jeez. Running every day, like doing hardcore thing, yeah. training twice a day, eat sleep train, eat yeah, sleep train. Yeah, lengthy motherfucker too. Hey. Yeah, yeah. So lead me up to the fight then. The first fight, first no Nolan fight. No no. What was your name? Like what was your fight name? Okay, everybody called me No No there because No No Yeah, No No. Yeah. Wow, let's go. Uh, and um No No the Beast. I just no, no, went the up. dragon. I uh, I remember I was like scared and I, I said uh I remember being like, I think I'm, I think I shouldn't fight. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about the this. This what? was like maybe two days before. And he was like, oh, don't worry. I, I said no elbows. Oh, okay. So elbows are, are illegal. Where you get like cut up and shit. Right. And I was like, okay, that, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, So that kind of like relaxed me into it a little bit. But the first round, dude elbowed me. He elbowed you. Yeah. Do they say anything or get a point off? A yeah. Point my, my, my guy, my, my corner was so mad. And then, but they just let it, they kept, it kept going. Jeez. So like, adversity, baby. So I was like, okay. So I yeah. threw some elbows too. Oh, you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's actually a picture. I don't know if you, but I remember. I remember this vividly. Maybe I'm just remembering this, but yeah, I yeah. think there was a picture of me holding. This is illegal, but he's against the ropes and I'm up against them and I'm holding the rope. Yeah. And kind of pushing, and you can see my elbow like this. So I'm just holding. Ready. I'm pushing the rope into his body so he comes closer to me and I'm elbowing him. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, man. Fuck, man. I had to do everything I could. So how many rounds and how many minutes per round was this? And it was Muay Thai, right? It was Muay Thai. I honestly can't remember. Couldn't I, remember, I eh? can't remember. So did you win? Yeah, it was like on a technicality, but I won. What's the technicality? Uh, So it got to the last round and what was it? I th- Or I guess it was like a, a TKO, like he stopped or whatever. Oh, he did stop. Um, he fucked him up then. Uh, yeah, but I, I I can't remember. I think maybe he was just like had enough of it. Like it, it didn't feel like a win, but it was like a okay. And was he a guy from Thai? Yeah, he was. He was Thai. Yeah. He was way bigger than me too. Really? So there was no weight cut and there was no weigh-in scale. That's why I was like kind of pissed because he yeah it, it seemed it was just like a bar fight like you so, know like it wasn't like a I wasn't like didn't it's not like today where it's like everything is professional. It yeah, was just like I'm at a bar and this guy's fights every weekend yeah so how many more fights did you get in after that not many how many like, i don't know what, what did we like three or four after that like you ever it, knock out somebody uh like look at look at a standing eight like a you know like yeah but nothing crazy how'd that feel 
Uh, like, did you feel bad for him or no? Yeah, like when I would hurt somebody, it felt bad. But in the moment, you probably felt good though, right? It felt like, okay, that means I'm not getting hurt. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but <laughs> when right? did it sink in, like, I kind of hurt that guy? Uh, I always wondered that. You know what I mean? If I ever, like, did fight and I yeah, there was actually a guy clean. There was actually one time uh, fighting in, in uh, Koh Samui um, where I felt, like, really bad because the guy wasn't really trained. Like, he, it felt like he was just a Thai guy, like, not training, and he came to this fight. And I, I felt like... Uh, at the time, I couldn't see that. It was just like yeah. I was just going ready to fight. Well, that's what you and had to I, think. And I you think I, I think I hurt him pretty bad. And I felt I felt like I think that was actually my last fight. I had some sparring and stuff that felt kind of like fighting it, but it was just yeah. sparring after that. But um, at that point, that was my last one. And I felt really, kind of yeah. just like ah, I don't need to do this. The thing that I love about Muay Thai is the training. Mm-hmm. Like when when Pete is holding pads for me, and I can just like kick the shit out of him yeah. and get every type of aggression out <laughs> honestly like he's a solid dude he can take my kicks he's a solid dude man for sure like and when he goes yeah good kicks like that's uh, that's a good hard kick yeah. that's just like there's nothing better than that man like just doing some good technique and yeah. getting all of the aggression out and almost- that's, what, that's what's beautiful about muay thai to me i'm not like i guess i to answer your question i was never about hurting anybody yeah i just wanted to to like compete and prove myself and then it was like i don't need to keep doing this it almost goes back to the basketball format how you're saying you're just in the zone and you're just kind of chilling that's when you're hitting pads right yeah you kind of just feel like it's almost a meditation for you absolutely man that's crazy yeah almost like you reroute your emotions your anger right all your fears into one place yeah you kick it and it's it's when you get into that zone even even if you're just at any time you can feel that to me it kind of like it brings clarity to, to the rest of my life yeah you know? Yeah. I was going to say, um, I don't know if we should get into this, but were you a monk when you got there too? So afterwards, yeah. So after, after, do you, like, you want to get into that a little bit or what? Sure, man. Yeah, yeah. I would love to yeah. get into that. So, um, that's interesting shit. So, so maybe, how long ago was it? So, so this I was, was after 18. fighting? Was it after fighting? Yeah. Then? So, so I went, so after when I was 18, I went back to Canada and I like came back here and I was working and, yeah. and living here and still training Muay Thai. And then uh, I went back when I was 22, uh, back to Thailand, back to the same place, training with B. For how long? Uh, like, what made you go back too? I loved it, man. That was like, like I said, it was like the, it, it was the one time in my life where I felt like I belonged and yeah. I felt like family. And it was just like, oh. And when I was here, I was kind of just like, I was working, and it was like a reverse culture shock. I just felt like I didn't belong, and all my friends were like partying or like doing stuff, and I was just kind of like. Ah, there's so much more. I want to feel that challenge. I want to feel like, no, you know. For sure, man. You grew up really fast. Holy shit. I mean, I, I was lucky to have people around me, like like B, like the trainer, like my, you know, some good, yeah. like really good friends. At a young age, man. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I went back to Thailand, and it felt kind of different. Like, I was, I, it, it didn't feel like the first time, like when I was 18. Um, maybe because things changed a little bit, and I was, I wasn't as like uh motivated and i i was still training but i i I didn't want to fight and uh i was like partying and like drinking and stuff at in thailand yeah and that that was kind of sounds like a fun time it was a fun time but like it 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 kind of steered me in like a different direction uh and then i just i kind of yeah i like lost yourself a little bit i did i I did i lost myself yeah at 22 i lost myself and um i got dengue fever i don't know if you have you ever heard of dengue fever never heard of it have you peter i have have you had it no i haven't had it but man it kills for sure it it kills mosquitoes it's from mosquitoes and they call it break bone fever because it feels like all the bones in your in your body are broken yeah it's just it's just like the aches are insane like you're puking i was like i was like shaking like a mono but worse it's yeah i don't know i've never had mono yeah. It's like it was pretty bad. Like I remember feeling like, oh fuck, like I might and again Ebola, I'm twenty two and I'm like super dramatic, but I was like, I might die. I called my mom and I was like, Hey, just so you know, I'm really, really sick. I'm going to the hospital. I don't know what's gonna happen. I might not come home. Just to let you know. You said that to her. Yeah. She was like freaking out. Yeah, she was in tears. I was in tears. I was like, I've never been this sick in my life. Like yeah. I don't know what's going on. And in on. Thailand, do you have insurance? Or are you paying for all this? Like, how uh, does that work too? So it actually my memory could be like super foggy because this was like 10 plus years ago, 12 years ago. But yeah. I remember not having to pay when I went to the hospital. 
I don't know. You didn't pay? I didn't pay. Maybe B just came in there and paid for it. Maybe. Yeah. But like again, like I was just like kind of oblivious to a lot of things when I was younger. So I even remember going to a doctor and like talking about dengue fever and like just getting a a motorcycle taxi back to my hotel. So did you just get a prescription or what the hell happened? I think so. And how long did that last? I can't I, I You don't even remember. know how long that lasted. I'm not sure because what happened was so I got really, really sick and uh I remember I was walking, I was in Chiang Mai, which is like the bigger city. Uh in uh, northern thailand and i was walking down kind of the, the bar street yeah um during like in the morning and i was like drinking a beer and i was like fuck this sucks and this thai family waves me in it's like hey, hey come come i just followed them into this little restaurant why like, were they looking at you like because i looked like i probably looked like i was dying okay looked like i probably they probably thought i was hung over i had a beer in my hands, I yeah. like was looked like shit, and they like come, come, come. Yeah. So I was like, okay, whatever. It was Fuck. a me- it was a little Mexican restaurant. Oh, okay. Called El Toro. El Toro in Chiang Mai, and this Thai family um decided to take care of me. And this is this is a big this is a big moment in your life, I'm assuming. Cause I got it life changing, man. What did yeah. they do, man? They took care of me. They they were like, oh, you're really sick, and they um they said they. they <laughs> They called me Sia Jai, which means uh, like, I, like I'm just heartbroken. And they saw that just within the moment, and yeah. were you, and you were sick too, and everything. I was sick. Hey. I was, my girlfriend back home was like cheating on me. I was yeah. like, "Fuck this!" I was Damn. had dengue fever. I was just like <laughs> the worst poem. And they, and they yeah. could just tell right away. They were like, "Oh, like yeah, you're sick, but your heart's broken." Yeah. And they um gave me some like herbs and stuff, and and gave me a, a beautiful bowl of soup. And I uh, just sat with them. And then I was like about to leave. I was about to pay for it. And they're like, no, no, don't pay. Like, Come here tomorrow. Come here tomorrow, tomorrow morning. I was like, okay. And then I just sat with them. I just sat with them and talked with the mom and talked about life and talked about Buddhism and talked about like everything. And it was like a therapy thing. And it was just like, um, so the mom and uh, her daughter and her son were like working at the restaurant. And then her like cousin and the nephew were working there. And uh, we would just sit all day just talking. And, and people would come into the restaurant and they, we would help them out and stuff. But we were just sitting at this little table outside at the front of the restaurant. And I was just learning about, I was learning about Thailand, learning about Buddhism and like learning about life. And uh, one weekend they were like, hey, do you want to come to the temple with us? She showed me this beautiful temple that had like, it was in the in the fucking jungle that tourists don't go to and i was like wow this is what is this this is amazing and they gave me some books to read and i was like really diving into to buddhism and again it felt like i belonged yeah it felt like these people that like shouldn't care about me were like caring so much about me it's also crazy how open you were though it's crazy how open they were like why do they care about me like i i wasn't giving them money no not at all like you know when and in places i'm like and did it not scare you did not like think that these guys might fuck me like, not once people asked me that question they were like the fuck they were like you just like you were just staying there you just like left your stuff there like your yeah. your backpack and your computer i was like yeah what made you feel so safe love you just felt that shit yeah that's crazy i bro. lived there i was with them for like more than a year man like it was like they they became my family and i was calling them like uh like mebun tam means like a like godmother uh, they were calling me like son like it was just yeah. like a brother like it was just so it just like made sense work with them and everything i just help. i would help them with the restaurant but i couldn't yeah. really do much i would clean up and like oh, whatever and, yeah. and talk to foreigners that or tourists that came in and but you had a bed there and everything after? yeah yeah i would sleep upstairs how tiny was this bed in the area like how, how little was it it was on the floor oh crazy man yeah. that's wild yeah, it was i was like i'm like super blessed that that they like a thai people have like such giant hearts but like luckily like this family i don't know i still don't really understand why they 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 took me in um but they did and they uh she took me i was still kind of like recovering from being sick and being like you know kind of messed up and uh i wasn't drinking anymore and she dropped me off at this temple and was like we'll come back in a week see how you like it yeah and so i just i did a, a week stay at a temple and i was meditating and 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 following the rules of living at a temple in thailand and then i came back and i I talked to her and i was like i think i think i want to be a monk is that is that something i could do and she was like 
You think so? You really? And I was like, but yeah. Like, what kind of monk? Like, there's a bunch of monks out there. So you just, so you just think a monk ter- at the time? Ter- well, like the Theravada Buddhist monks are the ones in Thailand. They're the okay. ones in the orange robes. So did so you they see them when head. they were there? When you were there, did you see they were the one? They were the ones at the temple that would take care of you and like okay. teach you and stuff. There we and go. Yeah. So I told her, I was like, I think I want to do that. Can I do that? Like, can I do that as a tourist? Like, I think, so can I just do it for like a, a little bit? Those guys? Yeah. 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 So I was wearing an orange robe like that. So what what did she say? She she got pretty emotional and she was just like amazed that that's something that I wanted to do. Yeah. And uh, in Thailand, you need a like a, as a foreigner, you need a uh a, a Thai person to be like a dependent to sign like a waiver being like if if this person becomes a monk, it's on me. So they took any liability if I like if I messed up or if I broke the law, it was on them. And they signed that. And shit. they signed it for me. Wow. And I was like, "Are you sure?" That's some parent shit right there, man. Yeah. So that's the Mebun Tum is like a godmother in Thailand. Yeah. So she's, at the ceremony when I became a monk, she acted as my as my mom, and she, she actually she called my mom and talked to my mom and asked for permission. And my mom was like, "Yeah." Absolutely. So you were there for a whole year. You didn't go back to Canada. You were there from what, what was this again? Then two thousand. Uh, 12, that would have been 11? 2012, yeah. Yeah, for a whole year. Yeah, I had to like go to different countries for like a uh, to uh, redo my visa. So yeah, we would, yeah. like, but other than did that, you call your mom at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this at this time I was calling my mom. <laughs> yeah, but then, but when I was a monk, I I didn't have access. So uh, at so that point, let's I just get into the journey of the monk. Then, man, how yeah. did you like? You can't just apply. It's not like you apply with it or anything. Did yeah. You? So well, like, she took me to different temples and was like, "Would would you accept him?" to be like a, a monk at your temple and the, one of the main uh this big temple in the city was like no we he has tattoos he he might be trying to like uh stay here long term and like uh, get in trouble with his visa and stuff we don't want him and she was like kind of upset about that and then she took me to her her home uh temple which is uh, it's called Wat Pa Bun Nak. it's uh, up north um by Changdao and it's uh the it's translation is the temple of this guy right here the naka so the nak it's like a, a like a thai water dragon okay it's badass that's cool. it's a protector that's why i got it tattooed on me after i was a monk or uh sorry like so as i was training to then? be a monk yeah they accepted me and it was just like this amazing enlightened monk um kruba la is his name and yeah. he uh he <laughs> didn't really speak english but he looked at me and he uh he said he asked he said uh do you like it here at this temple and it was like the middle of nowhere no electricity no running water it used to it's like i think the thai people like the locals would say that the the the, the village or the the forest was haunted yeah because it was like a battlefield like 500 years ago mm-hmm. so it was kind of like a creepy like bamboo jungle and he asked me if i liked it and i said i love it so peaceful and then yeah, he said yeah. okay make yourself at home yeah in thai and then i so uh, give you a bedroom and everything or i what? had a little hut a little kuti it's called okay. a little like a tin hut roof tin roof hut in the jungle and i had a dog that protected me you had a dog his he name gave was, you a dog his name was i duke he was a, a thai dog and he was honestly i don't know but he whispered something in this dog's ear and after that the dog never left my side that's it was shit. wild and there's like there was like other dogs running around the temple but this dog was like right here always that's cool i do yeah he was badass he had a scar on his face so like do you have this. to train this dog or did you have i didn't to do no with? i didn't You're even just chilling i just would pet him so what's the what did you have to do then and what's the daily life of trying to be like, you don't become it like a, a monk immediately right do you have yeah, to so do I was a like, couple things so i was like uh it's called a, a, a naklien so like a student and i would wear all white and i would help out and and, and clean the temple and and take care of stuff and then uh study and prove that i wanted to like that it was actually serious yeah um and then i did a ceremony in in the in the city at the big temple and it was a, an amazing beautiful ceremony and you have to memorize this thing in in sanskrit and pali like a, a a chant just like an our father almost but for yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah that's a, a probably probably similar so yeah. i it, it was like a long thing that i memorized and i did it in front of all these it was crazy because it was like all these thai families is they're like their sons and and fathers are becoming monks 
and then like just me <laughs> it's like yeah. white 22 year old like lanky, tatted, up. <laughs> tatted up looking like looking like prison break with my shaved head did like, you have to shave your head i, I had to sh- but... shave my head and shave my eyebrows and eyebrows yeah and, and facial hair i'm assuming everything yeah. i couldn't grow a beard <laughs> back then anyway <laughs> but uh, yeah any photos of that shit or no yeah 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 it's probably it's on my face. actually if you if you google? C- could you google uh if you look up on vice uh, vice did an article about my time as a, uh, a vice yeah man uh they did it Fucking was just famous. a little thing because when i came back from from thailand i like was doing poetry and i was doing writing because i was writing so much oh uh, shit. but when i was when you're a monk, because I was following all 200, I was trying to follow all 227 precepts. So there's 227 rules that you follow as a monk. And one of them is no listening to music. Wow. So instead of listening to music, I would just write poetry. Jesus. And just write what was on my mind, like diary journals. And like after meditation, like write everything that would come up with my childhood or with everything that like, it was just so healing for me. Because I was by myself yeah. in the middle of a jungle when I was just writing What's the benefits of all that, you think? Like, now that you're kind of done from being a monk and you're not following those rules T to T now, what do you think the differences are from following those rules T to T to now? I think it for me it just shows, or it showed me that I could just, like, trust myself. Mm-hmm. I, could, I could, like, I could follow, like, a strict regiment. I could, like, really dive deep into my, my consciousness or heart or whatever you want to call it yeah. and just, like, understand what was going on. And there was times where I would like have like breakdowns and just be like, I can't do this. Or I'd like freak out, but it was just me. It's just me that I'm like, it's yeah. just me. I'm tackling. There's no opponent now. It's just me. It's just trying to understand myself. Is there anything from Thai, like you're saying from Buddhists that you still do nowadays, like anything tradition or any, uh, yeah, like uh, meditation. Do keep doing? I, yeah. I meditate every day. Yeah. I try to at least once a day. Um, is the values of, of learning like, you know, patience, I try to be a patient person. I try to be understanding. I try to look at things from every angle. Obviously, it's we're living. I own a business. I'm I'm running around. I'm doing all this stuff. It, emotions will flare up. I get upset, but I try to find the middle way, and I try to be calm for yeah. most most parts. But that's easier said than done. But it's a good reminder to anchor myself when I come home, and it's like okay, I can just like yeah, you know, just chill out. Yeah. Do you do um, any goal setting or anything like that? Or yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's like a that's that doesn't come from Buddhism. No, it doesn't it just come from Buddhism. From, that, yeah, that, that, but that comes from like wanting to be better, right? And yeah. like I think for everything is for me, I wanna I want to be able to spend this time that I have on Earth mm-hmm. learning and growing as much as possible and yeah. enjoying at the same time. Yeah. Right. So I think goal setting is a big part of that. I think meditation is a big part of that for me. I think conversations with people mm-hmm. is a huge part of that for me. Huge. Um, and just being like, for me, if I'm interested in something, if I want to learn about something, I have to dive headfirst into it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to ask all the questions I can think of. I'm going to like go right into it. I'm going to take a risk of looking like an idiot. I don't yeah. fucking care. Yeah. I'm doing a podcast. We do a podcast, you know, with, with our Dylan, friends yeah. with Dylan is like I don't care about how I seem because yeah. I know that I'm just like I'm just experiencing it. I'm just having fun with it. I'm well, just trying it. to figure it out. Just from that bull rider to fucking um, the white tie, like when you're 18, yeah. like fuck it, I'm gonna go do this. I'm it's just the same attitude it. you did when you were starting your eco zone. Yep. You know what I mean? Screw it. I'm gonna do it. I don't care what anybody thinks about me. Yeah. That's a really cool attitude, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's me right there, man. <laughs> Look at that guy, man. 22 year old. No, no. Looks like a machine gun Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Machine Monk Kelly. <laughs> Zoom in on that shit. Yeah. Holy fuck, man. That's crazy, man. Yeah. that's uh, So that's the sleeve was first then, hey? Yeah, the sleeve was when I was training to be like learning how to when to become a monk. Like I was I would go into the city and uh guy tatted me up. Do you know these guys' names besides you? I don't remember them. You don't remember them? No, no. because your monk name is different than your, your actual name, yeah. Man, um, save this photo, man. <laughs> You're lengthy, man. Yeah, man. So did you um did you do um be can you can you be a monk and still practice Muay Thai? No. You can't. No, no, no. So that was over. Yeah. So you can so a lot of guys in Thailand they'll like like Muay Thai fighters will take a break from Muay Thai and do uh like they'll become a monk for like a week yeah. or a month or or whatever. But um yeah, like it, it goes against like the the rules of becoming a monk. Like you're not you're not supposed to hit anybody or like 
That's what I mean. Yeah. So how did you when when you were done? Be- how did you end beat a monk? How did that stop? Like, can you just walk away from it, or is it like a yeah, gang and they y- gotta make you like stay in that shit? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no. yeah. You never know. That's that. like actually a good question. That's what yeah. my mom said when when she found out that I was becoming a monk. She was yeah. like, as long as you know that you can leave if you want to. Yeah, that's and what that, matters. And that was a big thing, right? Because it's like she doesn't know. She, I'm halfway around the world. She's never been here. She doesn't know this connection that I have with this family or these. That was my first thought too, or, though. Or the, or the temple, right? Yeah. And and I, I looked into it, and it's like, yeah, at any time I could disrobe. There's just a ceremony that I have to do, and I and I can go back at any time. But the only thing is, like. Uh, Technically, you're you're not supposed to have any debt or responsibilities that you're running away from if you're becoming a monk. So if you like owe a bunch of money or if you, you have like a job, a you can't just like go be a monk and like run away from it. So that's crazy. You just have to make sure your all your things are sorted out and you're good to go. And, well, it makes sense and, though at the same you time. You know, if I if I wanted to retire at, like when I'm older, like or when I'm you know in my seventies, and I could go be a monk if I wanted to. Yeah. So how was the undressing ceremony? The, yeah you it, have to do it yeah i did it it's basically just um and how did you come to terms with that like when like why did you want to leave and when did why did you want to get out of there i didn't want to leave so why did you leave uh well i i didn't want to but i knew i had to because it was uh what is what does that mean like why do you mean what do you mean by that because it was i got to a point where it was just so peaceful man like i wake up every morning 4 a.m uh the 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 two monks would come to my door i'd, I'd get ready get our alms bowl so a big metal bowl and we'd walk five kilometers into town yeah. from our little temple barefoot walking on gravel across this beautiful bridge in this jungle and go to town and all these people at like 5 a.m 6 a.m they're waiting for you like this with their offering and they, they give you the food and you put it in the bowl and you do a blessing for them like a, a chant yeah. and then you walk back get into the temple around nine o'clock get ready do a ceremony Ten thirty, we eat that's the one meal that we eat for the yeah. day. You eat one meal a day. One meal a day. Is it big? It's pretty big. It's whatever is donated by the by the village, right? Oh, okay. Um, and it's like every whatever is there, like whatever is there, you eat. So, what made you want to leave this peacefulness? Um, yeah, and then after that, it was just meditation and 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 yeah. self. <laughs> the the head monk at the time said to me you've done everything that you needed to and it's time for you to like take what you learned out there really and to me i thought like i thought he just didn't want me around so yeah, it's kind of like, like mm. yeah. that was my initial response right but yeah. that it made sense to me and i talked to him about it but it was like i'm 22 and i'm from canada and he was he said his thing that he would like repeat was you have a voice yeah i didn't really know what that meant but he said, yeah, you have a voice. Go, go, go with your voice. What you learn here, use your voice. And at first, were you like, no? I was like, okay, I don't know what that means. Oh, okay. But to me, after like, I just like listened to him. I was like, okay, I, I disrobed, I did the ceremony, went back into the city. It, was, it felt weird wearing clothes, like like a t-shirt felt weird. Um, but I was like trying to figure out what he what he meant by that. And to me, it was like, oh, I have to share what I learned and, and everything I wrote with my poetry and like my, my writings. And so I did music stuff and I did like writing and I did poetry. And then, and then that kind of was like, I would use that, use the lessons that I learned. And I yeah. did that with, uh, with, uh, music and stuff. Did you go home immediately and start doing that stuff? Uh, or did you stay in Thailand for a little bit. I stayed in Thailand for a little bit. I don't, can't remember how long it was, but I, I made it back home. I actually, yeah. Cause my, when I came back, to thailand or came back to canada from thailand that time my eyebrows hadn't fully grown in so uh-huh. people were looking at me funny i remember that and one of the, like dude? one of my friend's moms was like looking at me like super strange i was in her house or in their house and she yeah. was like she like didn't recognize me because i had like no eyebrows oh, and shit. i was super tan because i was in thailand for yeah. however long yeah so was it a, like a culture shock coming back to canada it felt like everything was moving way too fast and everybody was like angry i felt like i felt like this weird anger from everybody but it was just like anxiety it was just like you know everybody's and, and got a job to do and everybody's got yeah, a business they to got, do. they got stuff to do it's not a it's not a jungle nolan it's not it's not the temple anymore we got you don't have a a so, dog taking care of you you gotta take care of yourself was that challenging it was yeah it was a yeah it was it a culture was. shock yeah so for what sure. was the first job you got into after thailand like 
We're working at the gym. We're working at Gold's Gym. Gold's fucking gym, yeah. baby. Yeah, that was a good time, actually. I liked it. What it were you fun. doing there again? Selling memberships. Yeah. Just, yeah. So did you, like, get a job immediately because you needed money or what? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, I didn't work for, however, like, for two years. So at that point in your life, how did you, like, go about it? Like, were you still spiritual? Like, were you still, like, doing your thing? Like, how did you do Did you go kickboxing? Did you do Muay Thai? Like, how did you, like... No, I took a break. I didn't do Muay Thai anymore at that point. I so just, I how just... long did it take to get to do Muay Thai again and still keep your spirituality? To when I met him. Four years after that point. Like, 2017? Yeah. 2018? A while ago. 2017, yeah. And at that point, it was like, oh, I can do, I can do Muay Thai and not, like, be angry. I can just help. Like, it can help me, like... Yeah. with my emotions and i can take out all, all my aggression on pita so you met producer pete at at a, at a where we're at yeah. at work at work and working at the at the group home oh at the group home yeah. and then how'd you guys get into like knowing you guys like you you and my tie together no we pretty much just started talking well i kind of knew because of my sponsorship and i knew that he worked at uh at the gym oh okay so who uh broke the ice first and we're like you want to hit pads together well, we just like talk. We're like, hey, I remember, I remember you. You know, like how guys do, right? I know. Like, hey, bro, want to be best friends? <laughs> how yeah. fast, how fast guys become friends? It's yeah, just like man. A day or two, we're like, hey, it's man, simple. Peter has that mentality and that demeanor about him that it's just like he's easy to be around, and he's got that like it's you know let's just go go with the flow, bro. No just wonder, yeah, that's pads. why he's here right now. Exactly. Can't wait till we get him on camera and show the world. Yeah, man. Is, but yeah. someday, someday. So, did, were you a part of a gym then before? Or what? What got you into Muay Thai? Um, pretty much like you guys, like how you guys got into it, it was just like fear, right? Yeah. Fear is like a motivating thing. Yeah. So mm. I did fighting because I was like kind of picked on as a kid. Okay. To so try and get rid of that fear, I had to like be trying to be confident and like be trained. So when I trained and stuff, I felt stronger and myself felt confident. And then you, I just grew up with it. Yeah. yeah, no, I feel that. You get any fights? Like you get any fights underneath your belt? Yeah, I had a couple of fights. Because yeah. he was in, you were in wrestling initially, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, so you went into Mui, or into MMA. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, you could, yeah, MMA would be your thing for sure. Thanks, bro. Crazy, man. Yeah. It's crazy how it brings people together. Yeah, man. It's cool. It's good yeah. shit. Like, when you see somebody that, like, is, you know, training their ass off and it's, like, like minded, mm -hmm. it creates a bond. It's crazy how we met, too. Yeah. How did you guys meet? Yeah, I think it was the basketball, wasn't it? Was it basketball? Yeah. Before it was. Just, like, during, like, a basketball game. Just a basketball thing. Dylan called me. We should give Ask a, me if I wanted to let's play. Let's tell them who Dylan is first, yeah. Dylan yep. Tran is our podcast host in our other podcast, The Night Market, where you are basically our main host. So uh, I think you're the main host. I think you and I are the main host, and Three we're just hosts. trying to just... Yeah, do our thing, yeah. man. So he's one of our other guys. So when we say Dylan, he's just our third dude on the other podcast. And he's our barber. Yeah, but he got us together. He actually yeah. pulled up a whole um, basketball team. What was that for again? I can't remember. It was some tournament, like or some weekly thing, and he just like... T randomly messaged me being like hey uh do you want to play in this tournament and i was like yeah sure i haven't yeah. played basketball like in a while but let's go yeah, yeah. and how did you guys connect did you guys just look at each other and be like hey bro i was like hey what's up bro you look like you're 22 years old <laughs> <laughs> i swear you look younger than i thought yeah. i was wearing a hat and then halfway through <laughs> he threw out his back and i was like oh he's a little, <laughs> he's a little, <laughs> he's a little older than 22 yeah, yeah no this is, this is what happened is uh nick we we were playing pretty well. We played pretty well in that in that tournament. And yeah. then uh, I was like, oh yeah, like what do you do? Blah blah blah. Like I was like, right, I want a cleaning company. And like, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I play for the Durs. And I was like, okay, yeah, cool. What's that? <laughs> I was like, I had no idea. I was like, the Durs. I don't even know. Yeah. It's like, oh, the Riders. Oh, sick. You play football? Damn. Okay, cool. <laughs> and then uh, at the end of the game, like we were leaving, and and Nick shook my hand. And he goes, yeah, nice to meet you, man. Good guy. And he like, part of you, like, good, good guy. I was like, all right, cool, I man. I sense a good guy, man. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, if I don't fuck with you off the bat, it's like, oh, no, man, I'm not going to talk to and you. And then you guys just became best friends after that handshake. Yeah, it was just like, it was like but you could tell. You could tell it was like like-minded people. And I, yeah. I yeah. honestly, like, I respect everything that Nick's doing. It's like he's a professional athlete. He's doing all this podcast stuff. He's we were talking about I think the first time we met we were like, yeah, we should do a podcast. He's like, oh, I'm down to do a podcast like Joe Rogan. Let's go. Yeah, I man, like, I fucking right, let's love go. podcast. So when you guys told me that I was like, fuck yeah, I'm down. So how did you I want to get into that. How did you guys start the podcast? Because I wasn't initially the first group with it. You guys had somebody else in there and so who started it? Was it you or Dylan? Yeah, it was me. So yeah. uh, basically I love podcasts because of the conversation and I love listening into a uh conversation like an intellectual or emotional or a funny conversation and to me it just feels like i'm there i'm part of it yeah so i would listen to it a whole bunch when i was working and i just had all these podcasts on repeat and then when work started to slow down it calmed down for me um 
I was talking to David, our mutual friend David, yeah, who's a great guy. Um, Dave. And he does like uh, video work. And he was and, the other guy, right? Yeah. And, yeah and, and I said like, "Hey, man, you want to do a podcast?" He was like, "Yeah, that's, that's that's a great idea. I'd love to do a podcast." We were kind of thinking of who else to 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 do it with, and uh, Dylan was cutting my hair one day, and it was a great conversation. And I was like, hey, "Yeah, man, this would be a good podcast. You can you can talk." Yeah. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he can't have a real conversation when he's cutting hair, though. <laughs> he's got to get him to do something, you know. So you should do just bring a barber chair. Here. That's what he I was said. Like, um, paint the picture. We need him to get him paint a picture. Or just do something with his hands yeah. creatively, and then I and swear then he'll be able to talk. Yeah, like, it's, he, it's not like he can't talk, but he just gets distracted and gets kind of all over the place. But it, we're human, right? We all do. But, yeah, but like he's trying. Just him painting it off. Just painting <laughs> during <laughs> a podcast. What did you paint, Dylan? Yeah. <laughs> you <made> a picture. <laughs> so you got Dylan, you and him, and how did you guys get all like you bought the mics? I'm, I'm guessing, and then you yeah. guys did all the things. Yeah, yeah. David had all the the video equipment because that's what he does for his job. Oh, sweet. And, uh, yeah, I just I was like, oh, let's go. I bought the mics, and and then we did a few episodes. It was a fun time, and then it kind of um david got too busy with work he was so he was all right and then uh well hey, i was gonna ask that what were the initial um challenges that you guys faced starting the podcast uh, probably time yeah time like like getting the three of us together we were all really busy it was it was the time and it was also kind of the same thing we're dealing with now with like um that just with people what <laughs> like you know what i mean like i'm not i'm not, I'm not trying to trash talk dylan but like just no. getting dylan to like yeah. feel comfortable and, and relax and have a good like have a good conversation it's on, hard for people camera. to talk and be their own self on camera too though even for myself i'm yeah. i'm still having a hard time trying to just be myself like in the beginning of this podcast man i was a little nervous i was talking a little fast i'm doing thing but as soon as you get comfortable and in the vibe you forget that camera's there what got you into podcasting like because obviously we like we approached you and asked you but like what and i know you like joe rogan and stuff but what yeah. got you into it just the knowledge i was loving listening to joe rogan podcast and i would listen to like the motivational ones like you know yeah. david goggins and all the sport athletes and fuck yeah and then and jocko. Fucking, and jocko i would listen to jocko you know what i mean the military you know what i mean yeah. like Stay i would just hard. listen to that shit and i would just be in the background it would just motivate the fuck out of me for some reason you know and then i used to be into music at the time and maybe at the time there was no more good more music coming out there was yeah. no music i couldn't i was sick of the fucking playlist i had so I started listening to podcast and originally i didn't think about starting a podcast or doing any of that shit even though i was really creative in doing my other shit with making yep. highlight videos and all that and then one day i don't know if it was you or dylan came up to me it's one of us yeah and you're like, you want to join the podcast, man? And I was like, yeah, man, that sounds like an awesome time. You know what I mean? Not knowing what was what was ahead of everything. You know what I mean? Of all the time Sick. commitment and do what we're doing. But man, like, we ended up doing it starting in Dylan's fucking um, yeah, his little barber shop. In his little barber shop, and it took us like four hours to get set up that oh, first day. We were free, we forgot shit. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know how to set shit up. Technical man. difficulties. It's just like starting a business. Like you think it's everything's going to be great, but then it ends up being like, holy fuck, it's harder than we thought. But it's good. It's good when. The those things happen because yep. it teaches you and it kind of it gives you it makes you remember like okay this is i actually want to do this i want to get through this tough exactly. stuff so i can like experience what it's like yep. and i'm really glad and grateful that like we did we're doing this like um i think it's it's a great thing to just be able to have a podcast and chat i don't care like to me personally i say this often but i don't care if we have like a thousand listeners or 10 listeners Fact. it just feels good to just talk We'll get together like this too, like man. Yeah. It's a freaking Friday night. We're Fuck just yeah. chilling, having a. I'm having a drink. You guys are chilling, and we're just doing our thing, having a normal conversation. And I feel nowadays when we're so into the technology phase, and we're on our phones all the time, we're on the computer. We don't hang around with our friends and just get to actually yeah. talk conversation and ask all these new questions. Like, when do we actually get to talk about this ever? Yeah, honestly, like about wait, your life. It about helps your you life. like to know your friends better too, right? Crazy, yeah. yeah. What do you think? What do you think is like a a challenge that that you've had with with podcasting and like or like how has it made uh, things better or worse now that you're podcasting? Um, just being consistent with it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we all have our normal lives and we all have our normal jobs that we actually have to focus on to make an income to support yeah. our families, right? Yeah. So doing this is just kind of like playing a video game or doing something else you do it when you have time right yeah. but it then comes a point where you have fans and followers and you're like yo why aren't you posting every week why aren't <laughs> yeah. you doing this right and it almost comes like a, a commitment right mm -hmm. so it's like a love it almost becomes like a love-hate relationship just like a work right you yeah. want to go into your job like everybody starts their job loving it you know what i mean yeah. and it becomes work well you yeah know what I mean? the, the thing with you too is like i think both of us have this is when you do something yeah. when i do something 
you got to do it fully. And you, you're have, like, to you have to make it perfect too. It needs to be perfect. Perfection, but it's also that like that passion of just going all in yeah. and just like just loving that you're doing it. Yeah. And you could tell when when you're training football. When I was watching you train football, it was holy fuck. This is that same like it's the same love, killer man. instinct, yeah. right? Or that, or that love, I guess. I appreciate that. And then when you're doing the editing and you're learning and you're teaching, you taught yourself how to do all this editing stuff. Exactly. But you I know? do that stuff because I don't want to work a nine to five job, man. Yeah. I'd rather do all this kind of work for myself and build my own business and work for each okay. other. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I can help my friends, my family, and myself do it instead of working that nine to five. That's the, I don't that's care the, how much work it's going to take. I'm going to yeah, do it. That's the ideal like setting. And you're building that for yourself. Like You're only, what, 25? 25, yeah. I trained 26 yeah. in October here. Yeah, fuck, man. Like that is what I'm talking about. When you're like, "Oh, you did this at that young?" It's like you're doing this yeah. at 26. I, fuck, I wish I did this at 26. But you were you, know you were I mean? doing your own thing, though, man. But but you know what I'm saying, yeah. though, right? You have like the 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 mindset to be like, "This is what I want to do. This is what I need to do," and you're doing it. Yeah. Right. And like like you said in the last podcast, when you were like, "Oh, like you're talking about your speech and you're talking about like things that you're you were kind of like worried about," mm-hmm. but you're only getting better and better and like you're like great at hosting a podcast yeah like i think and it, you know I, what i mean i really appreciate you saying that but i also think it stems from our childhood like you were saying how you grew up and how it affects everything you're doing in your life yeah. i think it's the same thing for me from my childhood how i was raised and everything like i was grinding my ass off to be a professional football player since i was eight years old why what i don't know because i fucking loved it you know what i really? mean i just loved being out there and playing sports and it felt like i was just that dude and i never cared about making money at all i just really? wanted to be that goal i looked at that dude and i'm like man that dude looks just, he had everything, man. You know what I mean? Everybody's looking up to him. Everybody wants to be him for some reason, right? Yeah. So that's why I did it. And then when I actually get there, bro, Yeah. it's that's crazy. Awesome. And I think that's why, like, everything that affects me in my childhood, like, with your fighting, with your parents and everything, how you want to become a better family. Like, I saw my fucking fa- my family fight all the time. So I told myself, I'm going to have a family and we're not going to fight all the time. I always wanted to be better. And I saw yeah. some shitty things in the past, bro. So that's why it's always made me grow up. And I'm like, I'm going to be a professional football player. I'm going to have a family. I'm always going to do this. So I think that's what I was always telling myself, man. You know what I mean? I don't want to be in the situation I was when I was young. So I'm going to make sure I do everything to get out of it when I'm older. You can tell You can tell what you just said is clear in the way you carry yourself. Yeah. Right? And the way that you like go about your business and you do your job like professionally. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think a lot of people can look at that and and learn, but also appreciate it. You know what I mean? I it's like that, bro. I'm older than you, but I'm I'm inspired by that by you saying that yeah. to like do better, always to do better. Man, I appreciate that. But when I say that too, it comes with a lot of anxiety. You know what I mean? Like I feel being at that pro level, you're always thinking of what you have to do. You don't want to fuck up, right? Yeah. And I personally deal with anxiety, right? So yeah. I think the anxiety of my past and the anxiety of my everyday life of me always not wanting to fuck up, everything has to be perfect. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm a professional. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people wouldn't put in those work and wouldn't put in the time and wouldn't overthink it 500 times, right? Yeah. Like when I go watch film and I go out to football, man, I'm like, everything has to be perfect and if i fuck up once it's like my whole day just got ruined yeah right? man honestly but it's that fear and that anxiety that yeah. drives perfection and then drives that you're getting it's same with my business yeah i'm i'm paranoid about my business looking like shit so i'm like i'm always it's always that like make or break mentality Seriously. that made me perfect it yeah. and made me get better and made sure that my guys are on point and i go check their cleans and there can't be any you know and it's just like if there is an issue i'm, I'm trying to resolve it right away because it, it can't fail yes this is it's me right yeah. but then it gets to a point where it's like okay I've, i'm i'm doing it i'm enjoying it i'm able to like reap the success exactly I'm still a perfectionist but it's like but like that branches said, off, bro. Like it said, it branches off to everything you do in life. Right? Every it doesn't aspect, just, right? It doesn't just stop in your business life. Yeah. It goes on to your friendships, your relationships, yeah. to everything you do, it's, man. It's it's the things that matter, right? Yeah. Like you can't just neglect like your family because you're focusing on your business. You can't yeah. just be like, oh, well, this is my dream. It's like, well, no, it's a, your life has to be whole. Yeah. Right. And so, like you said, like you want, you don't want fighting in your family and you're, and you're making sure that you're, yep. you're, you're growing this, this beautiful thing you have with your girlfriend yep. and your house and everything. Right. Yep. And it, it's, it's that energy that you're putting into it yep. that you're already seeing benefits from, man. It's fucking awesome. I appreciate that, man. And it's a good question, actually. So, do you think people who grew up in like a happy lifestyle and have everything, like their parents aren't divorced or just doing great, or people who have like a really shitty upbringing, who, who does better in life? So, so here's the thing is, you you can never understand you'll never know how things affect other people in their life mm, like the so. worst thing that's ever happened to that person 
is the worst thing that's ever happened to them, mm-hmm. right? You can't be like, oh, well, that, like, you're, it, you, nothing ever, ever bad happened to you. Your parents were together. So you don't know what ha- like happened. You don't know no, maybe exactly. their parents were fighting. Maybe maybe they have extreme anxiety. You don't know the inner workings. So you can't be like, oh, like if you come from a broken home, you're you're more mature. Or you're you're able to handle things better because you saw this or you. It's like no man. Like I I think I believe that you can't be. You can't say, oh, if, if somebody has a whole bunch of trauma in their life, they're they're tougher or they have a whatever, right? Because, yep. like, you don't know how it affects people. No, like, you don't. Everybody's different, Like, man. it's easy to see, like, success stories of professional athletes that come from a really, really shitty situation and be like, yeah, that toughened them. That like, But there was so much going into it because yep. a lot of people that, that come from those situations, unfortunately, don't make it out. No. And they and the, the cycle continues. Yeah. Right, so it's it's really hard. It is a good question, but it's hard to say whether like a good home and 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 beautiful surroundings is like more beneficial than uh you know it's like you know I mean? it's yeah. it's all depends on the person. You never know what people are dealing with. You never know what their trauma is unless they're talking to you, right? Yeah. So I think I think that's it's, a good way to put it, man. That's a really good perspective. It's, it's it hard in. to compare, right? Like I can't compare. It's you can't compare people's lives like linear like that. No, you, can't. you know. Um, it's like the book you gave me. Um, talent is talent. What is it? Talent is not earned or talent. Talent is, is overrated. You talent like that is book? Overrated. I love that. I'm book, glad man. you like that. that. That was a book that, to me, made me really work hard with Muay Thai. It made me made me work hard in, in everything I do. So yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad that you enjoyed that read. Well, I was saying like you, you some people like Tiger Woods and um, a couple of chess players, and they're like they grew up with their fathers coaching them since they were three years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's basically saying that practice makes perfect, right? But there's a lot of people who have been coaching since three years old and still don't make it either. Yeah. So what's what's the tell? I don't know. That's the thing it's is so like there's weird. so many different factors that come to play, right? Yeah. Like different influences, different genetics, whatever it is. It's like all you can do is just work your hardest and, and enjoy the ride while you're doing it. It's outrageous, man. I think I know the answer for that. Let's hear it. What's the I answer? Think it's, I think it's suffering, honestly. Because like I heard something about Tiger Woods, what his dad would do because his dad would coach him at three years old. Yeah, he would emotionally and verbally just abuse him by saying all these things, and he said he gave him an outward, which is like enough. If he ever said that in his life, like his dad would stop coaching him, he would just live like a normal childhood and stuff, and just be a kid again. And that but pushed he, him. And that pushed him, and then mm-hmm. he never said that word. Yeah, ever. but that's straight up abuse. He would just yeah, exactly. Like, you know, it's like oh, like we can glorify that because he's the greatest golfer of all time. Yeah. But like, how many how many parents have done that to kids and they're not Tiger Woods? And they and they but turn out they did, to be. But he made them that. They but, did it but, the wrong way, though. But, maybe they did the wrong way. But, but you know what I'm saying? Love, right? You can't look at that. Like I can't look at that and be like, "Oh, that worked for Tiger Woods. I'm going to do that to my kid yeah. and 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 abuse them and 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 treat them like shit because I want them. I I want them to be the best golfer. Yeah, because each kid's different. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Same. But I think he made that choice. He gave no. him that choice by giving him that. Outward. He was fucking three. <laughs> he started at three. He's putting at three years old. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. But if you give that kid that choice, they they get to make it themselves, right? Of like yeah. the vision that they're trying to make. Kids can make their own choices at three. It's crazy. You, you guys I ever watch a uh, Molly's Tiger game <laughs> on um, Prime? You talked about it. Was, Molly's no. game is like a poker thing. It's a real life story about how this woman became like crazy millionaire by just running poker games. Shit. Right. But previously to that, she was in the Olympics downhill skier. Oh. Freestyle. Right. And she was like two tenths of a way of being like a gold medalist. Right. And she hit when she was going down, she hit a piece of bran- a branch that just destroyed her skate and she oh, like shit. destroyed her body. You know what I mean? And just those little happenstance moments made her into a fucking poker player. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. It's, it's crazy. crazy. The journey that people somehow, go through. Right? It's crazy. She had to suffer somehow in her life to make her like good at something basically exactly and i was that's more i think it is it is suffering right like it is it is putting yourself through stuff yeah and the reason i brought it up is because her dad was like a lawyer and pushing her ass till she was young yeah you know what i mean yeah and the one thing she was like when they showed a clip in the movie how she was like i want to go home dad this is too late you know what i mean like i'm three years old right and he was like give me an adjective of going home or something like that and he's like weak right she's like okay i'm gonna go back up that hill right it's like you give those little mind games to those kids and tell them that they're weak or something, and they're going to say, "No, I'm not weak, Dad. I want to prove it to you that I'm not." Well, it's like it's like Mike Tyson and Custom Auto, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Custom Auto, like basically hypnotized them into being not human, into being a machine. There is no he was like I Mike need Tyson was like there is no self. Yeah. You're only the the objective of winning this fight. That's all you are. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Man. I need I need that for football. Yeah. I, I mean, look at you guys, right? The guy, like what you guys are doing right now, basically. Like, yeah. Explain like how your your upbringing has brought you to the place that you are now. Yeah. So you have to go through a lot of stuff. A and lot it's of shit. Like, together, yeah. 
what Bruce Wayne had to go through in his life, like some form of hardship, and he had to overcome it. Yeah, he had to but overcome himself. Right? You also see other kids who don't go through any hardship make it too, right? Yeah. Do well, you, but yeah, I, but you I, don't. You see some, you see, but here's the thing: you, do, but Nate, you don't you don't know what they've been through. Yeah, like you Tommy don't. Fury. What about him? He's fucking famous as shit, and he's like, yeah. what, what is I he? I think like the terminal that he goes through is like being compared to his brother, with Jake Paul. What do you mean? He was famous as fuck. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. He's probably went through. Maybe he's probably gone through some who shit. Knows, as a fighter, man. I, I feel who like knows? who knows? Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't. That's he's one thing you should never fucking second guess. That's the thing is like I don't know. Like never. Like. I don't know, man. I, f- I feel like you probably get this a lot too. Is like people that are bitter that wanted to be maybe they're not bitter, but like they feel like they should be in your spot. You know, like mm-hmm. they they like they should be the the kid from Regina playing for the Riders. Like, I always it, thought you, that too. Do you know what I mean? Like I yeah. I could see that. That's what I think when I see Nick. Nick yeah, I, like, well, I, I could do that. Mean, I could do what man. Nick does. <laughs> <laughs> no, hell no. Yeah. I think I think those dudes know deep down that they didn't fucking work hard enough. No, but I think they did us. No, exactly. but, but you know they might say that shouldn't be bitter, but in the back, back of their fucking head, they know they didn't work that hard. They didn't but, suffer as much. But here's the thing. Here's the th- it's it's a it's, exactly. it's easier it's easier to make a make an excuse exactly rather than to be truthful and say I didn't work hard enough for it. That's what I mean. That's what I'm right? trying to say. They know like, you don't. Like for when when you asked me wh- if I was good at basketball, yeah. If you asked me that when I was 18, I would have been like, oh, yeah, like, no, I, I, I should be playing college ball, but, like, yeah. I just, I didn't get a chance when I played for, for Campbell because, like, politics. Yeah. Said, no, I wasn't good enough. That's crazy. I, I wasn't good enough. I didn't work hard enough for it. The one big you know difference I mean? between me and, then, and, and something like that is, like, I always thought I needed to be better. I never thought I was the dude. Like, even being on the riders it's right that, now. It's that and mentality. Be, and that being somebody else's dream and being on the riders. Bro, I fucking don't think I'm the dude. I need to get better every single day. Like, I'm almost embarrassed because I don't think I'm that good yet. You know what I mean? And then that's that crazy mentality that I live with every single day. And people don't understand that. No, a lot of people don't understand that. I get it, though. I get yeah. it to, to, to a certain extent. And it's it's what is obviously propelling you to get better and better. Yeah, it is. You but it sucked I mean? at the same fucking time. Man, you know honestly, I, mean? I don't know that much about football. I don't care that much about football. <laughs> but when I, when I, I'm just being honest. But when I watch, I'm, I'm starting to watch more football. When I watch you fucking tackle somebody, yeah. I'm yelling at my TV. Yeah. Like, I'm like going nuts. Yeah. I kind of hurt my shoulder last game when you did that tackle because I was like, ah, just going ape because it feels so good to see somebody yeah. that you care about, like your friend. Like, when I saw you in the offseason put all your hard work into it you went you went through your your hip surgery right hip yeah you went through your hip surgery you were working your ass off i saw you train i saw all this stuff you're going through you're you're going through camp and then you get a concussion and then you're back into back it and then you have people. a fucking kick-ass like back tackle yeah. that yeah, holy victory, shit man, man. I, I like know. i hope you know that you have people that they're just like fucking yelling at their tvs when you get a tackle like that I appreciate it that, feels man. fucking great to see man Fucking love it, boy. I love you guys, man. Awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, right back at you, man. Too. Yeah, Nick, I'm actually curious about that because obviously you didn't just make the CFL by, like, working hard. Obviously, you, you made the – okay, hold on. Let me rephrase that. You made the CFL by working your ass off, Yeah. right? But a lot of people, they don't just get to the CFL. They don't just get to the level you are by only, like, working hard. What else do you think got you there? Man, just like 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 you said, man. That like, if I didn't do this, I'm fucking got nothing. You know what I mean? Mm. If I don't do this, I told everybody that I was gonna do this. I told yeah. everybody since grade twelve, grade eleven, grade ten. I told everybody since grade ten, I'm gonna make the fucking league. Really? Yeah, I'll make the CFL regardless. You know what I mean? That's gonna be my job. That's what I'm gonna be doing. You know what I mean? So it was more like mm. I can't let these people down. Like, you know what I mean? I told everybody I was gonna do this. So I was more like almost embarrassed if I didn't do it. Yeah. So well, it it creates like accountability for yourself. One hundred percent, man. Yeah. So like I just every day I woke up, nothing else cared but me just doing what I had to do. Go to the gym, eat healthy, put on the weight, do what I have to do. Make sure I'm just working harder than everybody else. Yeah, that was basically it, man. So and I didn't really get into manifesting or like goal setting until like twenty nineteen, twenty twenty, the year before I got like drafted, you know what I mean? Like I was such oh. a young kid and I was just yeah. like, fuck it, I'm gonna work hard. If I work out five hundred times a week and do my thing, I'm gonna make the C F L, right? So what got you into that? What got you into manifestation? Why did you go that route? Uh, I started reading books, even the what's the warrior book over there? Fuck the orange book. What's that orange book over there, Peter? I forgot the name of it. The Alchemist. The Alchemist. So I started the Alchemist and the Alchemist really got me into spiritual thinking. 
We were just talking about The Alchemist yesterday. That's a great book. It's one a of the great, best books in my life. Read. Might have been one of the first books I've ever actually read. You know what I mean? Like, just to myself. Yeah, man. I, I'm the same way. It was the first book that I read cover to cover. I read the whole book without putting it down. I was just so amazed by it. I, I, I envisioned myself as that dude. You yeah, know what same. I mean? I, like, think, I think everybody does. Yeah, the man. Sand dunes and everything, man. Going I through, was that guy. Going through this crazy journey. <laughs> crazy. To find out that it was just right underneath you the whole time right? underneath me the whole time and then that's when i started getting into like podcasts and started reading about shit and then yeah. people started like on podcasts people are telling you what they do right yeah and i'm like oh shit i'll try this out right and then it was just manifest it, i really got into it before the draft right i told myself i'm gonna be a, i'm gonna be a number one draft pick i'm gonna be a fucking 240 pounds i'm gonna get a nfl look i'm gonna do all this outrageous shit that never ended up fucking happening right but the point was that I wrote it all fucking down and I chased that shit harder than I ever Fuck did. Yeah. And I still made the CFL. You know what I mean? Like in my mind, I was like, I'm making the NFL. I'm going first round. I'm doing everything possible. But you know what I mean? But you got to set your goals that fucking high. Man, Absolutely. Regardless yeah. of what you're doing. Yeah. And I think For that's sure. what got me there. You know what I mean? It was kind of sad though. When I looked at it, I was like, oh shit, I didn't make my goals. But at the end of the day, I looked at where I was and I was so grateful. Look at where you, where you are, man. And yeah. you're still like, you're still working. Like you're still like putting in that work. Oh, I'm not, I mean? I'm not close to being done. And that's yeah. the thing. I'm not, I'm close to being in my prime. I'm only 25 years old, man. Wait till I'm 26, 27, 28, right? What, what's the prime, what's a prime age for uh, somebody in your position? Like, like 28, 27. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's when you're in the league. So I'm only in my third year in the league right now, man. And I went through some bullshit, right? Like my first yeah. year in Winnipeg, man, and they got cut and told me I could never play special teams. I was shit, right? And I had to drive home eight, like five hours, and I literally thought football was done. Yeah, so like, there's a lot of ups and fucking downs in this shit. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just I think the biggest part. What, you, what was the question again? It was like what was what keeps you at it other than working yeah. out so yeah. hard? Yeah, yeah. It was my mental game, man. Yeah, you have to have a strong fucking mental game and believe in yourself. You know what I mean? Because there's right. going to be coaches, there's going to be people out there saying that you're not good, and there's going to be coaches that say you're not good when to play this other kid for the whole year and you have to sit behind them the whole year and thinking you're shit but you're not man that's just somebody else's perspective of you and right. wherever you go in university there's hundreds of places of different perspectives so that was the big thing my mental game yeah, yeah. absolutely so so you you see that like you doing this manifestation and you writing this and and having that accountability yeah you see the the positive impact from it the positive impact and the long run you know what i mean yeah. i feel like a lot of people think like hey i'm gonna do all this shit, and then next year i'm gonna be a superstar i want to be an all-star i'm being all canadian but in my mind i knew it was going to take five years six years yeah for yeah. all this shit to happen and for normal people out there it's hard for that shit to happen because it's hard for them to invest money do anything like that they want return right now it's, it's hard to see it's hard to see hard to even like plan or think of a long-term investment especially right? at, when you're 14 15 yeah. 16 years old yeah you right just, you just want to be the greatest right now you want to be the greatest it's immediate gratification right? yeah. exactly man yeah and it's crazy and that's one thing i think that i hold accountable is like i don't need to be great right now i'm going to be great when i'm 25 24 yeah you know what i mean like when i was in high school man it was all the hockey players all the dudes on the junior pats yeah. or like the dudes yeah. who um, played hockey right they were the dudes because yeah. they were getting drafted at 16 yeah. 17 right Oh, you play football? No, but the hockey dudes, right? Right. I was like, "Fuck it, wait till I'm 24, 23 years old, and these man, hockey dudes won't be doing shit." At that age, that's a good insight, man. That's good to know. That's good to realize. A lot of people don't see it like that. It's, right? it's, you're it's, an investment to yourself. You know what yeah. I mean? As soon as you realize that, man, like as soon as you start investing into yourself, it's gonna come so quick. Fuck yeah! You don't realize how fucking fast life goes. But see, man, that's the thing too. And I, I hate to, br well, I don't hate to bring it back, but I will bring it back to even doing a podcast like this. Yeah. Even you putting in the work and, and doing the editing and us sitting here and, and having a conversation, this this podcast isn't going to blow up and be like no. this one, this episode isn't going to, but it's building that and it's seeing the long term and it's and yeah. it's the consistency. And if we stick with it, it it's going to keep growing and we're going to get sponsorships Facts, or whatever it is. But and, that's not and even why I do it. People are going to listen to it. I know. Yeah. But that's just, that is a, a product of working hard towards something that you're Seriously. enjoying. Facts, right, man. And it's, what I enjoy about it too, because when you ask why do I do my own podcast, because we started talking about how we did our podcast yeah, together, yeah. and I branched off and tried to do my own, is because I just love the conversations. I love knowing what people are made of, and I'm surrounded by so many guys who are from the states and they're from different places. You know what I mean? And hearing yeah. their stories, man, are crazy. Just to like relate to them in any kind of way of how they got here and how they did their professional yeah. lives, and hearing your story and hearing Peter's story, man, I just enjoy that shit. See, see, the thing it motivates is me. The, the person that enjoys the hard work, if you, if you like train yourself or teach yourself, or if you're just lucky enough to love the hard work that you're doing, yeah. 
it's way different than being like, oh, okay, I'm just good. I got to work hard. I got to do this, even though you don't want to. But if you, if you change your mindset to be like, I love the hard work. I love the difficult stuff. Facts, man. You're going to keep going. You're going to, you're, it's not going to feel like as hard. It's going to, you're going to enjoy the work and the person that enjoys running or enjoys the hard shit is going to go a lot further than the person that just thinks that they need to, to get to a, uh, a certain 100%. destination. Do you think it's your surroundings of who you hang out with? hundred percent, a hundred percent that influences. I think, I think it's, it's your family, it's your relationships. It's, it's the people that you talk to every day. It's their mentality. It's contagious. I had a boss back in the day that he would always say, and like, maybe this isn't so like PC right now, but he would say, crazy is contagious. So be careful. And I was like, I can't remember how old I was, but I was younger. And I was like, that is the, the best thing that I could hear at that point. Because it was like... So what'd you think when you said that, though? I got to cut off some friends. Yeah. Right? Because I, maybe I was like, I don't know how old I was, 26 or yeah, maybe around your age. And it was like, at that point in my life, it was like, I'm, I'm still hanging out with some friends from high school or some friends just because they have been my friends. But they're doing shit that I don't, I'm not all about. I'm not. And so it's like... That crazy is contagious. If you're living a hectic and chaotic life yeah. that I don't want to live, I'm going to go hang out with the people that are living a certain way that I like and that I want to kind of, you know, I can like talk to those people and maybe learn stuff from them still, but I'm yeah. not going to be in their chaotic life. Yeah, I'm going to be out here living peaceful and, and grinding it at what I love doing. So do you have some friend groups where you had to say, hey guys, like, can't fucking hang out with you guys anymore. I don't really have that many friends. Even back in the day? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Even no, back in the day, that ever happened? Uh, honestly, I, I had to cut off a lot of people. And, and, and how'd you do it? Like, did you just, just tell them? No, man. Or not even say anything? So, sometimes I would have like yeah. heartfelt conversations, but it, sometimes it's just like, I can't, I'm not, I can't. I've had friends like even recently that it's just like when I'm hanging out with them, they're just talking shit about other people or talking shit about people that I care about, or they're yeah. just they gossip or they're angry or, and it's just like, you know what? I can't do this. Yeah. And sometimes it's that blunt being like, no, or sometimes it's just even like not answering the phone recently I had to be, Hey man, so I can't talk right now. I hope you're doing well. I'm not interested. Like, bye. And I'm sure they were upset, but it's yeah. just like, I can't, I can't get, wound up in it i'm out here enjoying my life and working hard thanks man you know and i know that sounds selfish but you don't no, it's need not, man. you don't need everybody in your life no you don't right you got to be selective because yeah. it's your life and i was ba- I, I was really bad at that in high school man like in high school i was i was a nerd in grade nine bro like i got cut in grade nine i was nobody came from no like was had nothing you know what i mean i was just a loser trying to figure it out all everybody from my elementary went to Campbell. I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna go to Lobolis. I wanna be a football star. Right. Damn. And, and then and I ended up getting cut in grade nine and saying I was shit and everything, right? So didn't even play high school in grade nine. But that whole year, man, I was just fucking it was hilarious. I was just trying to get more like just trying to get more follows, trying to get someone to notice me, mm. trying to just be that dude, trying to be the jock, man, trying to be that guy. Yeah. And eventually I worked out so hard in grade nine that I became that dude in grade ten. It became that dude in grade 11, it became that dude in grade 12, and I was like, the dude that wanted to go to parties, would drink yeah. my fucking ass off, be an idiot, be the jock, like, be the dude I am the not today. The center of attention, right? Be the center of attention, be like, fucking, I, it was horrible, just the classic dude. And as soon as I left high school and started realizing, holy fuck, what did I try to turn myself into there, right? I ended up fucking unfollowing thousand people off Facebook, thousands, like, just instantly, right? Like, I tried to turn into this different dude out of nowhere. And then people fucking hated that shit, right? Like, Nick, why you unfollowing yeah, me? Like, it was a yeah. big thing. Why you like, switch up on me? Why yeah. are you switching up? And yeah. it was like a huge thing in the city, right? And I just turned into this fucking ghost and tried to turn into my own self and say, I'm going to get pro, right? But it people hated that shit. People took it as like, Nick doesn't fuck with us. Nick hates us. Nick's a bad person, right? Yeah, and it man, turned into all that shit, man. Yeah. But it's crazy how like, like shit can happen. Like, you know what I mean? People in your surroundings were there for you. And as soon as you click an unfollow button on Instagram... They're against you. See, but the thing is, the people that like are really gonna like stick with you and really matter, they'll understand. And maybe they, they won't. Did. They maybe did. they maybe they yeah. won't understand, but they'll have a conversation. Yeah. Like we just had a friend that like a friend of mine, a friend of ours, just deleted all socials and he, he exited our group chat. And I was like, <laughs> Did he just like ditch us? And yeah. I called him and I was like, Hey, what's going on, man? He's like, Oh man, like sorry, like I, I meant to text you, like I just had to get out of everything, yeah. taking a break. Good for you for texting him. Well, I, I called him because I, I wanted to make sure everything was okay, yeah. right? Because I care about him. But like, um, 
you know, it's sometimes it takes that. And if if he's saying like, you know what, Nolan, fuck you, it's you, you're pissing me off. It's like, okay, cool, I'm sorry. Like, let's. But he yeah. didn't do it. Was, but you know what I mean? Like, sometimes you got to be clear to like. Hundred percent. So he's got to be off socials. I understand that. I'm there for him. If you yeah. want to go, grab a coffee, talk. I'm like right I have here. a buddy like that too. You know? I won't I won't drop his name or anything, but we were best fucking friends. Like my dude, best friends, right? And then as soon as he got to his team and we got to my other team, man, he just kind of shut up. Everything, Snapchat, yeah. Instagram, Facebook, dropped out of the world, right? Yeah. And you just kind of hear what's happening in his life now. And it's sad sometimes, but you realize, man, like he's doing his thing. Yeah. But if he, that's what he wanted to fucking do, he's doing it for a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. And you just gotta be happy. And you can't be angry at people like that. Oh nah, man. It's like being angry at people like that, man, it's fucked. Because yeah, it's not your life. No, Why the fuck do you care? They don't they don't owe you anything, right? Nothing. Like, even your best friend, they don't owe you that. No. You have to it's you gotta be it's a two way street, right? And so I think I think that's a really good point of just like people grow in different ways and, and, and people are going through their own shit and to be mad at somebody because they're not talking to you or they're yeah. doing their own thing. That's just selfish, man. Just take Facts. a look. You just gotta just take a breath and see what. Why are you mad that this person isn't in your yeah. life anymore? You but know? they don't even realize that. That's not their thought process. Yeah. You no, know what I mean, yeah, it's easy. It's easy to point the finger and be like, "He's an asshole. He's doing this," or, or like, "Oh, like you're not a good friend because you you left Seriously. me hanging." It's just like, I, sorry, I got I got other stuff I, I have to attend to. to. And, and when you grow up, it doesn't mean that I hate it. you. It doesn't mean that I don't think you're shit. It just Facts. means I got other shit. Facts, man. I was gonna ask you a question too. Is like, is it hard for you to make? real friendships nowadays uh I'm like, not, how did you I, how did you um trust me and get into our friendship i know because i know we've had our ups and downs almost in the podcast and did those things kind of make did those form our relationship more you think i trust you <laughs> well i'm just saying you know what i mean how uh, did you how did you, cause you just met me man you know yeah, what i mean yeah. it's hard for me too to like fucking be friends with people so for me if i'm being honest i'm not actively trying to make friends i'm not going out trying to make new friends yep. i'm happy with my family with my situation with my friends i don't need new friends i don't no new friends i don't i but i don't and like <laughs> when i you and i doing a podcast it's like i i think i first of all i do trust you and i i i think i you have great energy and i think we get along and i think it's good that we challenge each other yeah. and and that we're not just like oh oh and like sometimes we we butt heads a little bit yeah. but it's it's never like anything bad no, no no but it's because we care about this podcast shit right and because of that you you gain more of my trust yeah. the the reason that the way that i see how passionate you are about football about your podcast is like yeah i can fuck with nick Nick's a good friend of mine. Yeah. Right? Like you're you're the type of person that I can like I can trust and that vice versa, you know what I, I mean? I appreciate that, man, because for me it's really hard to make friends, man. Like other than it's not hard to make friends because I play with different guys every day on the football team. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, like, got, you year, got a whole squad. There's a different group of guys coming in that we're gonna be friends with, right? Yeah. But it's a different outside of it when I actually don't have to be like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're in when you're on a team, you have to be a team. You know what I mean? Yeah. No matter what, if you don't like each other. You gotta be a fucking team, suck it yeah. up regardless. So when I come out of out of football teams, like I just hang out with my girlfriend. I don't do anything, right? Yeah. I got well, my one best friend, two best friends, and I talk to my other dudes from other teams here and there. But for you, man, just to come into my life like this, bro, huge thing. It was, Likewise, it, man. And just just to bring you in and we even I hit heads that one that. time, man. Yeah, man. I'll never forget that. As soon as I hit heads with a friend, it means it's a real fucking friendship. You know what I mean? If you don't hit heads with one of your boys or anything at one point in your fucking life, it ain't a real friendship. You know what I, I mean? Think so. I mean? You got to go through some big thing. Shit. It's 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 a way of like, especially when there's like, it's this is gonna sound silly, but when there's two alpha males, yeah, two people that are like assertive and 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 want to get shit done, yeah, it's bound to do this, right? Bound. But it's it's just understanding that you're on the same page and understanding where you're at, yeah. and then it's fucking let's let's work, let's do shit, let's 100%. fucking enjoy this fucking ride that we're on. That's that's how I see it anyway, man. right? I agree one hundred percent, and I, that's why I love working with you, man, and. Even Dylan, man, sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you never stop butting I'm scared of getting button heads with fucking Peter, though. He's going to lay the fuck out of me. I'm easy going, brother. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he is easy going, man. I don't think, uh, yeah, I've never, I don't think I've had any issues with Peter ever. Yeah. How's he's, the, he's a solid dude. He's like the most supportive person you'll ever meet. He looks supportive just by looking at him. Yeah. Just, just, the camera can't see him, but sturdy just, supportive just, face. If you could see, just imagine supportiveness. It's just <laughs> fucking right there. Solid foundation. <laughs> so I want to get into like, let's get you in here a little bit. How is the one tap going? One tap baby fucking supplement for gamers. 
Yeah, it's going plug. well, man. We've just been, like, grinding. So we started, like, two weeks ago. How did it start? Like, two weeks ago, did just mm-hmm. a process in your mind, just something came up in your mind, like, shit, this is a good fucking idea. Actually, it even wasn't even my idea. My my friend just, like, we just texted. He was like, I want to do this so bad, you know? But you know how I am, just being supportive. I was like, let's do it, man. Yeah, so yeah. we just, like, went all out. Peter and, loves uh, stoking the fire. If he sees I just, a spark, if he sees a spark like he saw with my company, he's like, ah, let's go pour gasoline on that shit. Like he's that, he's that guy. If it's I saw work, the work, the memes right? and everything on your Instagram. Yeah. Was that you? No, that's uh, uh, partly me, but it's mostly all the ones that hit are all my my buddy's idea. Yeah, his name is Julian. He's just a genius, man. Is he? When it comes to these kind of things, at first, like uh, when him and I started, we we were good friends and stuff, but I. Just like you and Nolan, like when you go through something together, it like builds a friendship even Definitely, more. Right? Yeah. And I, my friendship with him has just grown even more. Just like going through a little struggles with him in this past couple of weeks. Yeah. We both never sleep. We just like wake up, meeting, get the work done. Get awesome, work man. Done. We just little, hit little goals. Yeah. And then we just like complete it, you know? And this just builds, you know? It's so, do you want to explain One Tap, what it is? And so, One Tap is a supplement brand for geared towards gamers at the moment. So it's going to be mostly at the moment, it's just like mind pills, yeah. nootropics, ashwagandha, uh, sleep aids. And then eventually we're going to try and branch over to like lifestyle stuff. So we're going to do creatine. We're going to do some uh, greens. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. Like AG1, like, but better AG1. Yeah. for, for, for AG1, gamers. But mm-hmm. he does. And then proteins and then um, some mushrooms, some kind of mushroom blends and stuff <laughs> like that. So. <coughs> Oh, like I'm tripping or no? No, no like, no, like no. a chaga mushroom probably or lion's mane lion's stuff. Mane. That oh, it, it's, yeah, it's a nootropic yeah, yeah. in a way because it, it's good for your brain, right? Mm-hmm. And that's that appeals to gamers because they don't want to like yeah. just be buzzing on caffeine or ephedrine. They want to be able to have clarity, but then go to bed at, at a good hour, it's right? Smart. It's a really smart idea, man. Thanks. Man. I think it's genius. I think they found a, a like a, a niche in the yeah, in the market, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and they're able to kind of grow and it's great branding it's really cool it's local i think it's it's something that's going to grow and i'm I'm glad that we're we're partnering or we're working together with the podcast 100 yeah, percent. you gonna, gonna sponsor us maybe or what of course, yeah, sponsor, sponsor, a... sponsor all the shows man who I need, was the I need some night night who was that um famous podcaster or famous gamer that was on the story today i saw on there it was a girl oh no the, we just at the moment we're, we're doing like a lot of outreach we're yeah. trying to get relationships with other gamers and stuff yeah so we are just interviewing a lot of people putting like little blog spots and just trying to get a community, basically. Like, that's how you... S- in order to start a brand, you want to get, like, a specific community to, like, kind of support each other, yeah. you know? So that's what we're trying to go for. Good so shit. are you big into making websites and everything I hear, or what? Uh, trying to. This guy's the website like a side king. S- it's like a side skill or something I'm trying to learn, but I'm not perfect at it. But yeah, just like you, man, like, with podcasting, you're trying to be better at everything. Yeah. So you got to... You learn, learn, learn every things. day. Exactly. You know what I mean? Every time you make content, you think it's the best fucking content, and then a week later, like, how the... Fuck did I do that yeah. shit? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if your dream is like trying to be a big podcaster, you gotta know how to edit. You gotta know how to do the 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 sounds. You gotta know how to do like the clips and stuff, yep. right? So you gotta be good at everything to make one thing good. Seriously, you need a good producer. Exactly. Well, try. <laughs> the Pete man. Producer Pete. <laughs> but, yeah, one tap. Cool. Yeah, man. It's like, it's so much growth, and it's uh, that's what I love about like like-minded people you see that they when they get a passion and they, they want to grow and they want to learn seriously it, you, like, you, there's stumbling blocks and everything but you just keep going and you it, it's good to be able to talk to people and be like hey like i have this problem or i have this issue and you have that you you create that like support system yeah and and then you can just grow and you can just enjoy it and no in regina it's hard to find people like that too man Honestly, man, that's why when when you uh, shook my hand after that basketball game and you said "good guy," I was like, "Yeah, let's let's work." <laughs> I'm straight up, you know what I mean? Like I, sometimes I just I just say what I'm thinking, you know what I mean? That's just who I yeah, am, for man, good or for worse. No, I think, you know it's, what I mean? think it's a good quality, man. It's a good trait. It could probably, you know, might get you into trouble sometimes, but fuck yeah. it, it's you, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's whatever, right? Fuck it, and let's fucking go. Let's get it, baby. That's why I swear too much, too. My bad. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for doing this with the Unrepeatable Podcast. Thanks, Peta, for coming. It, this is a great conversation. It's a great thing that that you're building. I'm happy to be a part of it with the uh, Night Market Podcast. It feels really cool to be here. Um, and honestly, man, it's just going to keep growing. It's just we're going to get better at the podcast game. We're going to get better at, at our craft that we're working on, whatever it is, whether it's supplements or business or professional sports. Like, it's fucking, it's great, man. We're going to kill it, whatever we do. That's the thing. It's that mindset and, and the work ethic and, like you said, learning and growing from your past instead of letting it be like a cycle and 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 
you know, using it as an excuse to Seriously. to not live your best fucking life or whatever it is you want. Yep. That's just how I see it. Man, I really appreciate those words, man. Yeah. And I really appreciate everybody on this podcast, the Pete man fucking helping us out over there. Producer Pete. And I wanted to say, um, if you guys really enjoyed this kind of vibe, having Nolan and Pete on the show, like let us know in the comments and let us know and DM me, man, because I want to have these guys on multiple times and make it a thing. We got to find Let's like go something we call it. We should call it something. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure out a name. The Island Boys. Or no. Repeatable show. No, no. Just, no, it's an unrepeatable show, but like having us three repeatable. on it. You two, have you two three guests Pete. on it. The three Pete? <laughs> the three Pete-io. We should, man, honestly, do you know what? Uh, maybe we, we got to do this uh, when you're uh, done with football in the off season or you, whatever, you can take a break. Yeah. We should hit pads, man. No, we, we need to hit pads. Let's been fucking go. We'll yeah. call it pad work, the pad work podcast. And we'll hit pads and we'll fucking kick the shit out of PETA and uh, have a good time. And uh, let's let's go. No, I can't wait to do that, man. We'll stay tuned for content and I hope you guys really enjoy <laughs> and enjoyed all this shit, man. Thanks again, baby. Stay positive. Stay safe. And be unrepeatable. Peace out.